It's Friday then, which means it's a double session of delights here at the Motors Super Series. 25 games to cram into the next 12 hours to find out who the final five finals night identities are going to be here at the Live Lounge. We saw someday in Group C, and this is what happened. Leighton Bennett ended day one without a point to his name, so the game for him will be to pick up some points and leave his Super Series experience with some confidence for the tournaments ahead. Joe Croft could feel hard done by on four points, some really good performances, but the results didn't correlate. Mindy is keeping things handy. Also picking up two wins, he's placed himself firmly in the mix. Wazzy was red hot at the start, a little wobble in the middle, but a strong end sees him onto six points. The same can be said of super sweet Anton Osland. He's been a pick of many of our pundits this week, and with an action as smooth as silk, the limits meet no bounds. But it is Ryan Harrington who leads the par, winning all five games yesterday. He knows that another strong showing will be enough for a Saturday night spot. So that's what we saw on day one. And joining me up here on the balcony to look back at it and to look ahead to what we're going to see today. It is Mace the Ace, Chris Mason. Chris, always great to be in your company. I bet. <laughs> and what a day we saw on day one here at the Super Series. Yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting when you actually break down all the stats because although Ryan Arrington won five out of five, tops the table comprehensively, wasn't actually the best player on the day. That went to Joe Croft. So the likelihood today, if there's going to be a shift in momentum and someone's going to come out of the pack could well be joe croft but this is how the table looks after the uh, first day's worth of fixtures one harrington leading the way he's got a four point lead on anton oslund and david vazuski in the group for david he got out the traps flying a little bit of a wobble in the middle but ended very strongly yeah i mean he again he was sort of averaging the the, the kind of numbers ryan was averaging in his opening couple of games they were very, very similar. And as you said, he went missing in the middle and then produced that high ceiling that we said he's got in the locker. And uh, best average of the day was to him, and it was his final match. So as Leighton Bennett is concerned, obviously zero points from his first day. Is it about just trying to enjoy it and get as much out of today as possible to move himself forward? Yeah, I think me and Nico have said from, from day one on Monday that this is very much a rebuilding process try and find out what works, what doesn't work, what attitude work, what, what, which doesn't work, uh, and just try and play himself into a bit of form. But disappointing day yesterday, just looked edgy and looked like he, he fell into that trapping group A of trying too hard. And this sport's quite bizarre. It's, you can't try it. It's just got to all be natural. You've got to remain focused and switched on mentally. But you can't afford to try, especially with a, a fluid type throw that he has. Well, let's see what the bookies make of the action then. And this is how the markets have compared and contrasted as the session has gone along. Well, Ryan Harrington, the big market movies, moved out from seventh, moved in from seven to two to two to five. No surprise being top of the table. But Anton Oslund also moving in. We were speaking about him yesterday at nine to two and how he could be a fancy pick. He's into four to one today. Yeah, in, in by half a point, uh, I think that's more down to the fact that Ryan is out in front by, uh, by four points. So it's going to take some reining in. But like I say, if anybody's the most likely, not necessarily to win the group because uh, Ryan's going to have to have a serious collapse and he's, he's far too experienced for that. But the, 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 the value in terms of who could maybe qualify out of the group could well be Joe Croft. But Anton, again, he was one of our picks to qualify. So, um, yeah, we'll probably stick with where we are with that. And do you think an extra day being on this stage, being in this environment is also going to help Joe as well? Yeah, yeah, you would think so. Listen, he's been playing a lot of darts of late, but not under the lights. And, and as we've said so often, it, it's a totally different game under the lights. But he, at times he looked very comfortable yesterday. A little bit inexperienced here and there, but all in all, I thought it was a very, very good performance. And he looks the danger man. If he can map back his stats up from yesterday, he, he, he's the one that could do some damage today. Well, let's have a look and see what the bet builder is saying and see whether Chris Mason is in agreement with the bet builder today. It pays just over five to one this show. Just some thoughts on this one, Mace. Yeah, Baruskas to beat Bennett. I can totally see why the punters at home are, are liking that one at four to seven. Uh, Croft against Ursland. Um, not so sure about that one at four to five, especially with Croft having the throw. And then Ustland against Harrington. 
Harrington match winner at six to five pays five point two two to one. Absolutely not. I like the four to seven in the opening bet against Bennett, but that's on the basis of, of how poor Bennett was yesterday. But as we know in darts, different day, different dollar. 18 plus B going away to Orgam. We're going to see Ryan Harrington in our first game of the session. He takes on Leighton Bennett. It is the bookending battle as far as Group C is concerned. And early on this morning, I caught up with Ryan. Ryan, Super Series, day one, perfect day. Just your assessment of that. Um, well, I have to say, like I've said here, when I came here previously, I haven't played as good as what some of these other boys are playing. I just seem to be taking the chances at the right time and, and just keeping some kind of... Um, consistency through that. I'm not doing anything over 90s average, but I seem to be consistently doing OK. I think the game that sticks out to me is against Joe Croft when he could have demolished me quite easily 4-1 and he kind of stepped off the gas and I just kept my consistency and came through Victor, thankfully. First time we saw you here, you weren't playing too much by way of darts. Since the last couple of appearances, what, have you been playing much outside of here in terms of competition or has it been solely this being your base for darts? Uh, well, I know it sounds bad, but I'm still not quite practising how I should be or want to. Um, the reason for that is, obviously, as you know, I had a kid at the, uh, a few years back. And with the world turning a bit of, of, of tough for a lot of people in this country and, and all over the world, me and my wife have took it upon ourselves to kind of work really hard and get ourselves into a more financially stable position. So darts has taken its toll from that, but it's put us in a much better position. So coming after this, um, I will be practising for Q School. I'm still debating whether to go to Challenge Tour because um, it might be a bit too early. Uh, but I will be putting in some hard practice getting into Q school. So you'll see some better things from me around then. You're enjoying this, aren't you? I can see it on your face. I love it. I really do. I love getting up on stage. And I haven't done it too many times, but I love the game. I love playing darts. It has killed me not doing it as much as what I used to do or should be doing. But I, I love the atmosphere, even though there's no people in the crowd at the moment. I, I just love it. It's brilliant. Well, that might be for tomorrow night. Ryan, wish you all the very best today. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. So then, here we go. First game of 25 on a frantic Friday at the Super Series. And it sees Ryan Harrington take on Leighton Bennett. Well, it is a fantastic Friday, so we need a fantastic commentary team. And we've got just a ticket for you this afternoon. It's a very good afternoon to Paul Nicholson. and Chris. Yeah, very good afternoon, Henry. And I suppose Ryan Harrington is hoping that it's not a freaky Friday because he is in a very commanding position at the top of the table on 10 points. And if he does the double over Leighton Bennett and gets the same sort of result as yesterday, he will be six clear, albeit having played one extra game. We fancy that he will need two wins today to possibly like it's Ryan qualify to very early. Game Get on. three, that will win the group. So over to you, Ryan. You've got the darts in the first game. I'm the asset, Paul Nicholson. This is Chris Mason. And this is Friday. 85. Could well be a fab Friday. Double session day, of course. We see the completion of this Group C. Tonight, we see 60. the completion of Group B. And, well, Nico, <laughs> for those not paying attention, Leighton Bennett with a stack attack. 59. Well, already Friday is like a very slowly cooked pulled pork. Try and pull the bones out of this one. Because... 60. For whatever reason, I'm sure he's got his reasons. He's looking for a new approach today. And we are starting 76. to see many players these days have different ways of delivering the dart. But this is a multitude of changes. One, a change of grip change of stack or angle of attack depending on how you look at it and a change of equipment as well he's got those molded style flights in which he obviously believes allow him to get the dart in a bit straighter shorter stem as well which will affect the time it takes the dart to react through the air and get into its angle of entry I just wonder if he thought that at one point he's not going to qualify from the group. Is this an opportunity to try something that he's maybe been doing in practice? And if that's the case, I'm fully behind it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's nothing to lose. And 
It's all right doing it in practice, but 60. doing it under the lights in a pressure situation will teach you all you need to know. You'll find out very quickly whether it's for you or it isn't for you. He might even unlock 137. something that he's never had. 100. Double top for Ryan for the first leg. 90. A chance for Lazy Bennett to break 66. early. Well, that's 15, so 51. Going to persevere with trying to leave double 18. 48. And there is going to be some 10. sort of erratic nature with this if he sticks Angel with it. He does lose leg. the first leg. Ryan but what I will say is that there is one serious benefit Second to the way he's doing to throw first. this delivery, is that they are going in a lot straighter. 100. It's almost like he's eliminating that dart from leaning to the right hand side. Yes, that's a that's a great call because the dart's not long enough to start getting that it's almost whip, and it's going through the air much quicker. One hundred and he's gone back to the quicker rhythm from Monday and Tuesday. So whether we look at this as a free hit today or some sort of experimental process. 96. Let's judge it after a couple of games if he goes with it, and then we can compare it to the numbers from earlier in the week. But there you can see 100. the dots are going in. I would have to estimate something in the region of 25 degrees straighter. Well, we're seeing from the other hey, camera see angle. We'll see how 24. extreme it is from here. But there you can see how below... 54. Horizontal they are. They're just not going so tailors when he threw them, they would literally leave the hand and it would it would be like a plane landing. There'd be no weep or wibble. It was so clean. Well this is very much a, a manufactured stack. Very much so. Forty. Ladies and you require seventy. He's got plenty of time to take care of leg two. Double top. Thirty. I just wonder, and I'm I'm looking at this from a, a scientific point of view. I think this angle of attack right now looks better than the previous one. But I just wonder if the rhythm that he employed on Wednesday alongside this grip and this attack angle would maybe be the best way to go. Because this still looks very quick. 35. And you do Ryan tend to find that 71. when someone makes a change like this, the scoring tends to improve a lot quicker than the doubling. Harrington could steal the leg. Game and does. On the with a pinpoint leg. 71. Ryan Harrington. Yeah, that's a leg that certainly Bennett should have took. Well, Harrington yesterday, I want to emphasize on the point first. that you made with Henry Chris Game because 81.44 the average for the day. That was fifth out of six players when it came to running average 66. for the day. You might think that that can't be right. <laughs> well, it is right. We've double-checked it. Yep. He had seven maximums, 32% on the doubles, which 100. was third when it came to doubles percentage. But it doesn't matter. He's got the 10 points in the bank. Like 60. he said in his interview with Henry, he wasn't playing his best, but he was getting the right shots at the right times. That's what it's all about. 55. And when he was pushed by Joe Croft, he mentioned that as well. He managed to just up his level a little bit and stick around and make 27. his presence felt. 67. As for Bennett yesterday, 58. running average of 75.24, around three points under his weekly running average. 43. Indeed, under what he's been doing on the development tour this year. Yeah, well, the, the numbers for Ryan that you just mentioned, it's hard to see him being too vulnerable, but... 96. With those kind of numbers, it does leave him a little vulnerable, but it's up to everybody else to raise their game above 
that level. 140. And in the scoring department, Leighton Bennett's certainly doing that. I mean, we've had one score of a ton or more from Harrington. He's 2-0 up. He's living a very charmed life. 57. Leighton, you record 96. Six. Yeah, that tells 11. a bit of a story. 58. On number 137. I think we've got a, an all-in attitude from, as Graham Begby would say, a good old pal of ours, all-in. Yeah, full-on Doyle Brunson. Just 38. power yeah. pork a dart. Well, one of the benefits of Game that shot the there is that if you miss it low, you've still got an open bed to aim at. There are drawbacks to having a flat light, but... You well, do get open up certain shots first. to yourself. Whether Leighton sticks with this or not, one thing we do know about him is that 100. he has the capability of doing the flatty. Yeah, and in experimenting, the, the fascinating thing is when you see Owen Bates and Luke Littler, they don't have to change hey, a thing and can do the same as Daryl Gurney. They can do the flatty. Where I never could unless I set the dart up. 98. Now Ryan's just got to be very professional in this game to try and get himself to 12 85. points. 85. His second game is against Joe Croft in game four. That could be very important. Imagine if he was to slip up in this one and slip 57. up against Joe. And if Joe beats Pavzewski, then this group is wide open. 97. did express that the, the potential was there for someone to come out of the pack. If not, maybe win the group. Certainly take a, a second position. 82. I don't know whether you've noticed this, Mace, but Leighton's first dart in this match has been his best dart. That's when he's aiming 45. it. 45. The other ones have just been a bit too rapid for me. There it is again. Yeah, he's very careful. He'll be going for it. Oh, 170. I'm sure you he did go for it. He hasn't had a very good relationship with the bullseye this week. 85. He's looking good. 85. Two, two. 47. Double 16 then. Just about. Fifteen. Only require one hundred and four. Now Ryan's going to be devastated at that first start. Thirty-eight. Later, you require thirty-two. Thirty-two again for Leighton. Won't have been pleased with his previous effort. Double four. 28. I think the doubles Running might need a bit of work 66. with this grip. Yeah, I agree. This is the thing about the way that Ryan is playing. He's playing like he 31. always does. He didn't prove my point Let very well there with that four. dot. But he's not thinking about his grip when he's playing. It's very natural to him. No score. And no matter how he grips the dot, Ryan and Raquan, 35. Boom, boom, does not like double two here in week five. 3 Doors caressing the outside wire. Lighting Starting to look four. a little bit like our first game from last night in Group B. Maybe some early nerves. 32. No score. Ryan and Raquan, 32. Not a lot we can really say about that. Game shot. What we can say is that Ryan takes Ryan that leg Harrington. in 26 darts. If he's living a charmed life, Fifth leg I think Ryan I might rub his head for first. luck. <laughs> Game on. Yeah, this is this is remarkable. Leighton Bennett has had 20 darts at a double over. Double the amount of darts at a double than Ryan's had. 85. 
He's hit eight scores of a ton or more. Ryan's hit one. Yeah, it's Ryan that leads 3-1. Answers on a postcard. Yeah, it's one of the weirdest games I've seen at the Super Series in my tenure here, which is... Extensive. Three Six. and a half years. Yeah, I've not quite worked out how many matches we've commentated on, but it's fast. I remember being here last week, and our referee, Owen Binks... 80. ...had his 3,000th game, which is quite the achievement. I think we've done... 30. ...a little more than that. Yeah. I don't think there's too many people in World Darts... 137. That ...called more games than we have. Possibly ever. <laughs> That's the thing about modern 100. day darts, isn't it? I was just having a little look at my database this morning, looking at some of the tournaments that are going on this weekend in World Darts. You've got the, the Finnish Open in Finland, obviously. You've got the CDC hosting an event in Brownsburg, Indiana. Not been there. You've got the Blueberry Hill Open in St. Louis, Missouri. Not been there either, but on, on the bucket list. German darts open over in Jena. And the Lake Erie Classic over in Ohio. So a lot of action in America here. 30. In the same week as week five. Ryan's just missed his first match dart. He's going to get more. Regardless of the performance. 40. Ryan requires This 32. is exactly what he needs. And no I can score. bring you some results, early results from the German Darts Open. Kevin Doetz has beat Callum Goffin, 6-2. Very good performance as well. Rasmus beaten Burton, 6-1. And Plasia's beaten George 57. Killington, 6-4. required 32. Ryan game Harrington has just beaten Leighton match. Bennett. Ryan the experiment Harrington. doesn't go to plan in the first game. It'll be fascinating to see if he continues with it when he plays in round two in game five against Mendogas Barauskas. But that one, the less said, the better about the averages. That one is Ryan Harrington four, Leighton Bennett one. We are back for game number two. I think this game might be a little bit better than the first one. I don't think Ryan Harrington is too fussed 
by that performance because he did bag two valuable points and now he has a six-point cushion over Ursland, Babzewski and an eight-point cushion over Borowskis and Croft. But was he? He was on fire at times yesterday, but he has put in the best average of the week. Okay. As for Joe Croft, though, we were super impressed with him yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think he got as much out of his performance in terms of points. I only picked up two wins yesterday. I think he played a whole heap better than that. I agree. I think when he played David yesterday, he did lose by four legs to nil, but I think that was more to do with how he handled first his like David fourth to game of the first. day because he knows game he should on. have won that one. He was playing superb stuff during that match with Ryan Harrington, but after he lost it, he was probably not given a great deal of time to absorb that defeat, and then he found himself on the back 100. of a really good performance from David. It'll be interesting to see how he goes today. A lot to like about that throw, I know that. 174! Switches over to the 18s, didn't like the light. Nice shade of British racing green today. Yeah, don't mind that at all. I think if you're trying to create yourself a little bit of a darts brand early in your career, colour can have a lot to do with it, but you don't see many people wearing that shade of green. 100. I just heard in my ears the same shade of green as the Masters. It's not quite there. But I see and what it, they're saying. And it's not Sunday. 77. <laughs> and we don't hand out a jacket on Saturday night. Well, oh, there's an idea. They do in one of the tournaments, don't they? Because Johnny Clayton's got a couple of them. Yeah, the Austrian darts open in Graz. You get a green jacket. And Johnny's got two of them. Van Gerwen's got a couple as well. 43. And Croft has so got 25, 25 here for an early break. And if he harbours any ambition of getting through in the top two of this group, he Five. needs to take chances like that. Did you require yep. 41. And I suppose that's what he was guilty of yesterday at times. Carved out the opportunities, didn't take them. Nine. Don't you require 20? Gets another crack at it. Game and does find double five. Joe Croft. So, the man who averaged 87.53 yesterday, the best running average of anybody, five Second maximums, and he also had the best doubles percentage of 38%, but found himself in fifth position. Darts in this format can be very strange. 24. And also, his best average of the day was a losing average. <laughs> Go figure. 100. Talking to Wazzy this morning about the shirt situation from yesterday because he was switching from one shirt to another. Six. He says he might continue to do that today because of the warm conditions in the live lounge. I think it's a very smart play, in fact. 140. Yeah, I agree. Well, the, the, as we mentioned yesterday, the player's area is really cool, air-conditioned. Air conditioned in a way where it doesn't affect the practice area. If you're curious as to why we can't air condition the playing arena, because we do have the luxury of doing that here, but we don't because air conditioning, when it circulates, does 100. affect the way the darts fly. It's not fair on both players. They just have to suck it up and take the heat. I remember when we used to go to, go to Vegas and the aircon couldn't be switched off for obvious reasons. So, like myself and many others, we'd go up in weight to Whoa, almost counter the David, swirl in the air. Another? Ooh, we got one last night from Owen Bates. Joe, you require 70. And we had one missed on the ball by his opponent in that match, Benjamin Drews. 38. Just misses top for the 78. Was he comes back for 25 to equalise? 
How many times have we seen that this week? That's three. Three times people one. have hit double nine on a 25 40. checkout. Oh, Ryan Harrington was dodging bullets in match one. Game show. On the Croft. second leg, Joe Croft. Boris in match two. Still against David to throw first. Game on. Is he going to reverse the fixture from yesterday? Because Wazzy did win by four legs to nil. Whoa, 180. Wazzy saying, I'm having none of that. There's been a 60. lot of good camaraderie in the practice room this week between the Scandinavians, people from the Nordic and Baltic tour, of course. 100. And people who have been knocking around each other all year on the challenge tour. But I think people are going to see a bit more of Joe over the next 12 months. I hey, get the feeling fine. we're going to see a lot of him from the ADC circuit because looking at his current form in vault events with the amateur dart circuit, he's won his last 57. Four. I didn't dig too deep yesterday. I just saw how he got here. But he's won his last four 60. vault events. David, you reckon 160. And he's playing in an awful lot of them. Maybe a sign of what he wants to do in the future. Well, he did mention that his, his business was sort of taking care of itself, allowing him to, to play more. So he may apply himself more. One on hundred and forty. seeing, David, requires there's some player in there. Yes, there is. Double eight. Game shot in the third well, that was different, David but it was very was good. Game. It worked. <laughs> 15 darts. Back in the game now. Four flag gets Joe to he throw. He does everything first. quickly, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, out, he's outscoring Joe at the moment. But uh, it's Joe that's finding 100. the doubles. So maybe that's the key to today. Don't average as high, but win more games. Makes no sense <laughs> saying that. No sense at all. 57. But you've got to remember as well that... Over the course of 10 matches played in Group C, everybody gets the darts five times. 41. And you can't have an exact same day. One day you're going to have the throw three times. One day you're going to have it twice. 60. Today, consequently, Joe's only got it twice. So he's going to have to be more attacking. 100. Yes. Sixty. Well, we have seen in this group that when players have played well, they've lost, and when they've not played well, they've won. One hundred and eighty. Second one eighty of the game for Joe, and that gets him to seven for the week. Was he is still ahead of him? Hey, He's got five. nine for the Joe week. Require eight Eight yesterday and one in this match Joe already. Aver Joe averaging over eighty-five, which is where he was for the day yesterday, wasn't he? Somewhere around there. Look on the bright side, Joe. Missing that 20 is not the end of the world. 40. Because you are com coming back for tops. Yeah, this 85 range, it'll do a lot of damage in this group because if you take 85 flat, 130. Two players that Very averaged over 85 40. yesterday, Joe and Anton Usland. Game shot on the fourth leg. Joe That's Croft. a 3 1 lead, and it's exactly 84 that he's got after four legs. 30% on the doubles, that first. sort of. Game on. Minimum, isn't it? It is. Don't want to be anything worse than that on a regular basis. 45. Yeah, a bit of a 50 50 split yesterday. Three players had percentages over 30%, three under. And predominantly, you're not going to get 60. to Saturday night with a percentage under 30. No. And if you do, I don't think you're going to do too much damage. 140. Now, if you do, keep the rabbit's foot in your pocket. As for last night, there were two players 79. who had doubles percentages under 20%. And that's why there is a chance of separation Nine, between five. the top three and the bottom two after one more round tonight. One hundred and forty. When Joe was playing against Ryan Harrington yesterday, he had a hot spell in that game. 
and he was on fire. 100. I wonder if he's going to find that hot spell again. Because if he does, I want to see it. 121, David. You record 121. Got to be the 11 for the ball. 85. Go at the ball. 101. This is for two very valuable points. Double 18. That game is a great win Adamant. for Joe Croft. He Joe gets his Croft. revenge for game 14 yesterday, but not just getting the points in that one, that gets him to six. But because he wins by four legs to one, he reduces the Wazzy leg difference and improves his own. He's now up to third. And now we turn our attention to game three to see how Borowskis and Ursland do when they play their fifth game of the week. Welcome back. Game number three and the end of round one on Friday for Group C is imminent. But if you believe in Freaky Friday, how about this? Because yesterday when Joe Croft won his first game by four legs to one against Leighton Bennett, he averaged exactly 87. Today, he wins his first game four legs to one, averaging exactly 87. So, yeah, that doesn't happen very often. Well, you'll hope the similarities don't continue from yesterday. And he generates more points than he did yesterday. Because I'm not sure that eight will be enough for second position because... First leg, it's Anton to throw first. Game on. Anton to win this one and move on to eight. There will be a bit of carnage if Mindy was to get the win. Now, he did beat Anton yesterday. 177. Putting in a very, very good performance, but that's a really good early sign for Anton. Mindy averaged 92.29 hey, with 80% won. on the doubles against the Swede. And if he wins this match, we will have four players 59. on six points <laughs> hunting one spot, six points behind Ryan Harrington. Now, I know this is a bit weird to say this early. 
than 180. But the right result for Harrington is actually Borowskis to win. Absolutely. Because it keeps everybody six points behind him with one full round completed. 95. Certainly Joe Croft will be cheering on a... 120. Antonio Rakoya, 120. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the look of this table today. I think there's, there's a lot of possibilities. We went to the very final game in Group A. Why not another 170? 120. How many nine. shots are we going to get in it today? We've already had two. Double top. He's Can at it again. I think he likes Nimbus playing against Antonio Slund. Yeah, I agree. Maybe they've got to Setting know each other very well this week. And they're, Game. Well, he's very comfortable playing him. Because that was a, a strong leg. He's missed the ball for a 170. 118. For a 12. And he's lost the leg. This week it is 2-2. Two, two. There's been a bit of a pattern with their 96. fixtures throughout the course of the week. Monday, big win for Anton. Then a tight win for Mindy Tuesday. One Big win on Wednesday for Anton. Tight win for Mindy Thursday. So if we follow that pattern, Anton should win comfortably. But that 97. is just me picking numbers apart. This will, I'm sure, be very, very different. Make no mistake 85. as well. If Mendelgas was to make his way into the top two by the end of the day, he would be harbouring his own headlines and Lithuania would be taking note. And he's playing wonderfully today so far, isn't he? My goodness. 138. Gone out in 12 and he's left 60 after 12 in leg two. There are no second chances 60. when it comes to 60. Friday. Got to get it done today, otherwise you're going home. 20. Anton's thinking, Anton, why didn't you do that in the previous leg? He might hit him back with the same shot. But he won't. 54. Tops for 2 now. Require 40. He's had a few bad misses at tops this week, but he's had a lot of good hits. Double 10. And can't put it right. Antonio requires well, 66. Felt like a bit of a steal in leg one, but this would be a steal back. It'd be payback. 12. Double eight. 50. And I guess you require 10. Double five. Nudges the wire. Five. And the first time this week that he's shown Antonio that he's a bit cheesed 16. off. I don't blame him. This yeah. leg should have been his a while ago. Definite bit of frustration. Game shot in the One second apiece. leg. Anton Osland. Fourth match over in Germany on the Euro Tour. There's a couple of players I'm not familiar with, Nico. Do you know? So like it's Anton to throw first. These guys are. Game on. Yeah, Danny Tessman. I have actually seen him play before, but as for Rio van der Grint, nope, he's a new one on me. A bit like Fair Anton enough. was earlier this week, but this is one of the best things about working here at the Super Series. You get to know these players so intimately, and Six they four. get to know us as well, because when we were having our morning production meeting, up pops Anton saying, I've got some fresh flights today. Look, no, I'm listening one. to what you're saying. And we still weren't happy, were we? No, we were still trying to remould them. I think that's what I loved about going to the no, Euro Tour. Five. And then on the Thursday, I went to the host nation qualifiers, and it was fascinating to put a, a face to a name I may have seen pop up on 100. the draw before. What I will say is if you get the opportunity of going to the Belgian Darts Open in Visa next year, 100. I most definitely am going to the home nation qualifier the night before because there were 170 players in it last time. Everybody wants to be part of 
this glorious sport and its riches at the minute. Eight, two, one. And everybody wants to be part of Saturday night when you play here on a Friday. Only one person guaranteed 60. to be there at this stage, but so it might not be that long before we confirm the participation of Ryan Harrington, who plays Joe Croft next. 105. After that really hot start from Mendaugas. 125. Things have slowed down a little bit. And Zonia Rakuan, 65. Only a little bit. He might be about to lose his advantage that he carved out for himself in leg one. 45. Mendaugas Rakuan, 57. Double top again. Game this time he finds it. 2 1 it is to the Lithuanian. Now let us just have a little look at what well, Usland has done this week because yesterday he averaged 85.95, which is the kind of three figure average that can do a lot of damage. It did get him six points, which is equally his best day of the week. But in Group A, he averaged 86.66, so he did go down a little 58. bit yesterday on his weekly stats. His doubles percentage went down by 7%. 140. That's probably why he's not sitting on 8 or 10 points right now, because he did miss a fair few vital chances. Yeah, and that's 60. been his Achilles heel, hasn't it? He's had some great, great finishes. Oh. More ton plus finishes than any any other player this week. 24. Yeah, but I think the next line proves everything about yesterday. In Group A, he had seven ton plus checkouts. How many did he have on Thursday? Nada. Hey, T1. Niente. <laughs> Nine. 80. <laughs> zilch. <laughs> yeah, I like zilch. That's the name of the game. You've got to get the zilch. And that gets them a little closer. 162 minutes. Super 136. Shot. 60. And just imagine if he Does takes he this. We'll be putting him in the same bracket as Rob Cross and Peter Wright for a 3 or 2 and 6. Good company. Yeah, two of the greatest shots in Ali Pali history. 54. I mean, I guess you require 76. Great first start from Mindy. He's very fortunate not to hit double 11. 68. Antonio Rakuan, 86. Well, oh, yesterday, Anton had a shot at 28. Hit double 11, it fell out, then he hit double 14. Wow. Shouldn't be anywhere near that treble. 46. Mindy should require 8. Double 2. Can he find it? Six. He can't. Well, he's two from 15 and averaging and Rakuan, over 83. 40. He could have had this match won by yep. now. Yep. Should have been 4-0. Well, could have been 4 nil. Maybe. 2-2. Two, two. Double five. Game it is 2-2. Two, two. I don't and know Russell. how. Trying to figure out some of these players and their statistics this week has got me in a tiz. It's Anton yeah, first. because it's just it, it's consistently inconsistent. They yeah. go from hitting the doubles off the lampshades to not being able to find one of them. Well, Borowskis was 27% on doubles in Group A for the first three days. Then he ups 100. that by 10% yesterday. He was 15 from 41, which is very, very good. He also got his two biggest finishes of the week yesterday, so he really did ramp things up. But you can't ignore the fact that in a lot of matches this week, he's had so many darts to the double. This isn't even into him having three legs yet, and he's already had 15 darts. 100. Having said that, I will be amazed if anybody has more darts at double in a day than Benjamin Drew Roos from earlier in the week when he had 77. 121. Gotta be a Group A record. 
Having said that, Harry Gregory last night in four matches at 62. 140. Yeah, that's right up there. And Sonia Bakuma, 144. <laughs> Actually, if you look about the average that he had in the game, he, if he'd have had one more match, he probably would have had 77 or 78. 128. Not a stat to be proud of. 161. No. Good stat to ignore. 99. Ursuline's turn at double eight. 16. 16. And he does Game find a little nudger into the eighth segment. So it's a 3-2 lead for the Swede. Solid leg, 15 dart it. One more leg for him, and he will have See, that little advantage revenge. going Game. into round two, where he will play David Vavzuski. Six. So, with David losing his first game, and Anton on the cusp of winning his first game, he would then be the favourite, based on position, 60. to qualify with four rounds to go. But I'm sure... There will be a lot of toing and froing before we cement the places into 41. Saturday night with Conor Heenahan, who has been sitting back for the last 36 <laughs> hours saying, I'm very comfortable. Yeah, he's chilling. <clears throat> 140. I did warn Conor, by the way, that the weather was so beautiful here in Portsmouth. Just don't get sunburned. You can't play darts with sunburn. 60. No, another first-hand experience of that, having played in Vegas and deciding to enjoy the sun. Now you mentioned that air conditioning situation in Vegas. When we last played there in 2010 at the Tropicana, we used to start at 12 o'clock and they would turn the air conditioning off in the hall at 11.59. And you could hear the difference in noise. You'd have this little hum around the, the arena and then it would stop and everybody would... Say, oh, keep it on. 46. That did get very sticky in there. Yeah, the problem is then, though, is that you'll get then a mixture of air, which then changes everything. 140. Hot air hits cold air. You get tornadoes. Eighty-four. Ordinarily, I would say stay on the sixty there, but not really against what he did there, considering how much of that hey, sixty was won. not on offer. Like, well, this is a match-winning opportunity for Anton. Seventeen for tops. Double three. One hundred and eight. Well, he stayed in rhythm. Like, like, yeah, fifty-nine. He knew what he had. He didn't have to ask the question. Game shot with oh. sick flag. Baruskas was asked the question. He had the answer. I don't know how we've got we've got here, Nico, but it's three three. Every time seven these guys have played each other and it's gone right to like seven, Game Mindy has won. How many times has he had the throw? Well, he definitely had the dart yesterday. Let me check Tuesday. One hundred and eighty. Maybe he doesn't need the darts. He did have them on Tuesday as well. And he's countered that by hitting 41. the max. His second of the match. His average is 87. Predominantly, he's been in the low 80s and high 76. 70s. But every now and again, he's had a bit of a flashy one. Ursland has been the king of the skin savers this week. As far as saving his skin is concerned in relation to Saturday, it's got to be now. What a time to find a first max. And 85. sustained. And so you require 140. That really was a great maximum. I love it when people hit a maximum with their last opportunity for one in a match. Oh, come on. I was getting nervous when someone's got his angle of attack with a 140 yeah. like that. You've only got to go anywhere near the flight. Oh, look out. One There's a different expression on the face of Mendogas today. It's one of, and so you're I think 20. I might have needed that. Double 10. 
And it's no the wrong score. bed again. I'm going to get your record on 60. So many times this week we've seen it is Mindy on six points. 20. He isn't. Well, he's a limbo champion, but he might not win this match. Antonio required 20. It's all getting very tense. It's only match three. Can he get it right this time? He can. That's a huge match. double five Anton because Ursuline goes to eight points and he now creates a gap between himself and Borowskis of four points. That was a real trial. They met in the middle average-wise towards the 85 mark, but ultimately there were a lot of missed darts at double, but a great game. Might be the last time we see those two guys play each other this week. When we come back, it will be the start of round two. Welcome back, everybody, to the Motors Super Series, where before the break in our Scandinavian baton, a battle, baton, battle, it's definitely a battle, def yeah, it was definitely a battle between Anton Osler and Miramaskas Borowskas. Uh, he won 4 3. Prior to that, we saw wins for Joe Croft and for Ryan Harrington. Right, let's have a quick look at the league table. Ryan Harrington opening up a four point gap on Anton Osler, a six point gap on Joe Croft in third spot. So that is how the table lies. Next up for us, it is Harrington in action against Croft. And uh, watching this one in the culture box, it's Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson. Make this group now that we have one round of fixtures completed because Croft, who got the ideal start of a 4 1 victory against Wazzy, if he can maintain that and deny Harrington a seventh consecutive win, he would be in second position. On his own, on points. But it would have to be a very large win to get himself towards the top two. But 
I think his best Joe chance of first. qualifying to Dame is Game on. is gradual, just eroding of that gap, just making sure that nobody gets too far away. There might be a game later on in the schedule 28. where he feels this is my moment to strike. And it could well be the game against Anton. But for me, it's a must-win game. 180. As for Harrington, we know what he wants to do. He wants to stay undefeated. And he wants to be in Saturday night with games to spare. The last thing he needs is people starting to 48. tap him on the shoulder. It doesn't get much more comfortable in Group C than a four-point cushion when you're playing your seventh game. No, I think it's the 14. He's he's there. Yeah. Yeah, at 14. He's definitely giving me in the top two. I don't think he's too fussed eight. about winning the group and coming second. It's all no. about just getting there. Yeah, that's exactly what I said to Reese in 58. regards to Monday. Yep, the disappointment of not winning it, but you're in Group B. You're then into a group where three from five progress. My word, how good was he at the end of last night? Five. You know what, his final three games of the session. I mean, yeah, he did have a real absolute mare in the opening game. He even though he won it, he only averaged 76, 62, 50, but there, 93, 94, and 92, 96, and a 96.18. Just really good. And imagine leaving the venue last night. 78. That's got to feel good. Against the table topper. 30. Run over coin, 32. So the man from Chelmsford. Game shot on the is. first leg. And it is Ryan a break throw. Harrington. This was a great game yesterday. It really was. Croft was fabulous Second at times. Ryan to throw first. And at one point, Game. I thought he was too hot to handle for Ryan Harrington, but he just managed to stick in there and expose the tiniest bit of weakness from Joe. 45. And ultimately, Ryan would win by four legs to three. Yeah, Joe averaged 96.83, three from five 60. on the doubles, couple of 180s. He did little to nothing wrong. Ryan averaged 90.88 in winning. And that was the best average of the day for Ryan. 125. Just casting my mind over everybody else's performances 100. for the day. Here's another thing that I didn't even recognize until now. You know how I said Ryan had the fifth worst or the fifth best 95. running average? Because he was just above that of Bennett. But he still got to the top of the table. Whoa, as far as individual performances are concerned, he had the fifth best personal best of the day. Another one that tells us, how did he do it? 99. Time. Record 161. Such a great thing in many facets of life. Hitting cricket shots, hitting golf balls, hitting shots on a dartboard. Careers. Hang on a minute. Oh, he gave it every chance. Just a deflection, denying the dart. Finding tops. It's not just the fact that he missed the shot there and gave it a really good go, but he changed the dynamic of Joe's 104 effort. Ninety-six. Because at the back of the Ryan stage, he's probably 20. thinking he's going to hit this. Double five. Well, that is something 16. that annoys every dark player on the eight. planet. And in terms of annoyance... Oh, maybe not. I was going to say, the player in the double with the final dart is the icing on the cake, Game and he's done the just that. Leg. Joe Croft. As far as leg difference is concerned, Harrington is in the wind. He's on the plus 11. Joe to throw first. Joe on plus Game. one, currently sitting in third position. 
He's got many people around him that he can call rivals. Hey, it's he fine. Rouskas is behind the eight ball now because he's still on four points. He's got a lot of work to do if he wants to get to the top of the challenging pack. That's 139. Given that Ryan is so far away. But the leg difference of Croft is plus one. Borowskis minus one. Vavzevsky even. So there's only two legs between them. That makes Erstland's plus six on eight points look a little bit more rosy. 121. Yeah, because it could be a situation where any win won't be enough. It may be a win by a certain 60. score line, which makes it a whole lot different. So am I right in my thinking that you want to keep someone, at worst, within four legs? Ideally, if you are going to be behind, 100. you want to be, to, it to be two. So sometimes if you've got a better legs one, all you have to do is beat them. Yeah. 140. Run record 141. A slightly better performance average-wise so far for Ryan compared to his first game. Yeah. 30. Jeremy Prior to that visit, it was 95. He's left himself vulnerable. You can just tell that Joe is 45. fighting hard with his, with his head. He's trying to remain stone-faced. But it's very hard when you're under... This much pressure in the heat. 95. Do you require 111? 111. Double top. 71. Would have been his second best finish 16. of the week. But Ryan is a double eight. Third dart. Always Game's makes you feel worse there. when that goes Ryan third dart. Harrington. That yeah. one is a very green faced emoji. Yeah, you get a. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get it. Well, like it's Ryan to throw it. in your mouth. Game on. <laughs> yeah, look at that in the background. Tells you everything. First two are nowhere near, and then the third one is planted right in the middle. 120. Really interesting what Ryan was saying earlier about going to Q school in January and trying to re-establish his position in the pro game. Hey, that he's, five. over the last three years, tried to become more financially, financially secure. Imagine if he was to go to Saturday night, win £5,000 hey, there, two. get to Champions Week and pick up a stack of cash there as well. He'd be even more financially secure. Yeah, well, it would put a totally different look going forward, wouldn't it, with... I mean, in, a, in an ideal wor world for a player, you win hey, your week, fun. pick up the 20 grand, you go into to next year, pressure free. Well, Champions Week will conclude in Series 5 hey, on November 4th, the night before fireworks. I think we'll have some fireworks on that Saturday night. Somebody's going to enjoy the fireworks 58. display. I have fireworks here Saturday night. Why don't you join us? If you do have the facility to scan a QR code, there's one there that will take Fifth, you straight the to the eight. landing page of how you can reserve your tickets. The tickets are free. It's just a £2 booking fee. Drinks are three for £10. Any three drinks you like. A very affordable night out in a no, very eight. intimate Run darts venue. If you don't have the ability to scan the code, www.dartshop.tv While you're there, you'll also be able to reserve tickets for all the Saturdays going forward and, of course, the many, many exhibitions available up and down the country. There was a fabulous 45. one on last night where Gary Price hit a nine-darter for the Bradford crowd against... MVG, MVG actually went on to win the match. Yeah, lots of 150. different camera angles for that one with smartphones yeah. and I was dominating social media last night. These are the chances 59. that Joe's got to take. He knows Uruguay that he's going to be in, embroiled in a battle here with Ryan. Double top. 55. Coming up dry. 
Ryan missed Rakoum, four 56. darts at double in the match now, and every single one of them has been under pressure. Tops for 3-1. Game shot on the gets. fourth leg. Ryan Harrington. One leg away from safety. Fifth leg is Joe to throw first. Game he on. is dominating the group on the table, but it just doesn't feel like it. Well, the numbers don't stack up. You know, we would I think in a, a group like this, you'd certainly have to be in and around 86, maybe... Had a push 85, but probably more like 87. Think about what you've got to do on certain tours. And I like to correlate people's statistics from the challenge tour to this because it's the same sort of level of players. And if you look at someone like Owen Bates, who's a great barometer of where you're playing at the minute, he's up at 89. 140. Yeah, if you average around 90 here for the week, you're going to more often than not be close to getting your hands 59. on the 5,000 pounds. I don't think it'll be enough for a Champions Week. There are occasions where that's not enough. Just think back to when Luke Littler won his week in the previous series. 97. And he beat a certain Andy Bartons. And Andy was, what, 94 for the week? Yep. <laughs> Didn't even win. Didn't get close to winning. I think he'll be back, and I think he will win a week eventually. 89. Fabulous player. How much pressure can Ryan put on the number that Joe has left, which is 100 away? 59. Yeah, Ali, another one 70, of those players 70. that's in that conversation for one of the best players without a card. Double top again for Joe. Game this time he finds it. Leg. Game is Joe very Croft. much alive now, but... It's all about breaking the throw in leg six. If he doesn't get it, he'll have to stay on six Same points for now. Ryan's a throw first. He might be starting Game to rely on results going his way for the rest of the day. One hundred and forty. He could use one of those little hot spells that he had yesterday right now. He can rattle off two legs in about 25 darts. That might just get it done. I think that would get it done. Ryan Harrington, at 87 44. exactly, keeps cropping up for the third time today in our previous match at points. Raskus was locked on exactly 60. 87. I wonder if that's going to be the winning checkout of the week. <laughs> Joe Croft, of course, finished with exactly 87 in his opening game today. Let's have a look at Joe's average in his second game yesterday. I wonder if he can mimic it again. It was 89.36 when he 53. lost to Ursland. He's going to have to go great guns to get up to that because he's only on 81 and a half right now. 98. Steady from Harrington. That's how yeah. I would... Mid eighties. Categorize a leave of one hundred and sixty after twelve. One hundred and thirty-four. I never one hundred and sixty. Okay, so this one's not going to be hit. Something has to happen. Forty-two. To Joe, either here or in the next visit, if he gets one. Take this leg. You're the favourite for the match. Wow, that was so close to the bullseye. I can understand that play. Yep. He's trying to get 75 to leave tops. 100. And he gets the bullseye with the last dart, of course. How ironic. No match dart for Ryan. 78. Joey Rockwell, 15. No oh, score. no. Oh, no. Ryan no. Rockwell, 40. It's surrounded with peril, that single seven. And that is not what you want to find. I think even Ryan Harrington is a bit shocked by that. He's Going been dodging bullets for match. two days. Ryan Harrington. And you can understand why Joe is a bit miffed because now all he can do is get to 12 points in the table if he wins his final three games. But Ryan Harrington is already on 14. He looks very safe and his winning this group is very, very likely now.
When we come back, we will have a look at Leighton Bennett and see how he throws his darts against Mindy. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. We're back for game number five in Group C on Friday afternoon. And this is a battle of two players in the bottom two. Borowskis missed his chance to get to six points in his first game. It was a very good encounter with Anton Ostland, But he was left very bereft at the end. Now a chance to get six points once again. And you just wonder if that previous result was really good for him because it kept Joe Croft on six points within striking distance. A win here for Mindy, and he would demote Joe back to, to fifth first. position. Game on. Yeah, and he'd go within two of second position. Remember, it's the top two from this Group C. Six. Join Conor Heenahan. And the top three from tonight's Group B, which will be completed. 60. Sporty Stuff TV from... 10 p.m. this evening. Now, first Stick. things first. Things first. Oh, Leighton's maintaining this yeah. understacking method. Oh, sorry, the overstacking method. I was going to say reverse stacking. <laughs> He's confusing me so much this week. Fifty-eight. I'll be fascinated to hear from Leighton on. His social media account later 60. today because I'm sure there will be some sort of reaction to what's happened the last five days. He's not going to qualify because all he can do 95. is get eight points and somebody else is going to get eight or ten to take him out. His leg difference is not in a good place. One hundred and minus 17. It's one of the reasons why you couldn't even get odds on him winning the group because it was impossible. 100. <laughs> And I guess you were quite 101. 
Yeah, they started the day with Ryan at two to five. Well, that's seventy-six. Pretty and you were going hundred and forty-three. Go collect. If you did back him at two to five yesterday, Ryan was a seven to two shot. We did suggest some of the outsiders yesterday, didn't we? 54. One of them was I mean, I guess you record, Anton 25. in terms of qualifying. As it stands, on the first leg. Mindegas Borowskis. in second place. Yeah, sitting pretty for now. But the second last thing Mindigas these guys first. above and Dogus want is they don't want him to have some sort of charge. What? Hey, it's, it's a huge game next up, isn't it? Wazuski against Anton Ursland. And regardless of what Mindy does... If Ursland wins that one and goes to 10 points, he keeps everybody four points away with three games left. 100. That's where that separation occurs. One hundred and forty. Eighty one. Well, we're pretty sure, all oh, bar the shouting, Harrington's 100. through. But if Anton does beat David, it's done and dusted. He, he is through Ryan Harrington and will join Connie. 171. Like Three games to go as well. That's quite the effort, isn't it? Yep. And Mindy's going to get a look at a two data here for a 2 0 lead. These two have got to know each other very, very well. 32. Over the last and I guess you're requiring 64. Four and a half days. First day belonged to Leighton. 32. But the next three belonged Ladies to Mindaugas. He's won 4 2, 4 1, and 4 0. In fact, there's only one result missing from their collection, and that is a 4 3. Double 18. 56. Very good try. Why is the double 18? 32. A 1 1. Game on the money, the no cigar, 2-0. Baruskas, averaging again, Nico, in the 90s. The Ligget's Leighton to throw first. In the early stages of matches today, he's been putting down some markers. He still will probably be 96. shaking his head how he lost to Anton in match three today, going down 4-3 because, well, I can tell you why he lost. Three from 18 100. on the doubles. 100. Is it fair for me to say that these two here are actually at the same sort of juncture in their careers because 67. regardless of their age, they're still becoming the player that they want to be. Yeah, for sure. I think if Dougas was not to get himself on tour, for example, and he wanted to maybe participate in something like this a bit more in 2024. 54. This is the kind of week that would prepare him so much better for a World Cup campaign with Darius Labanouskas. And indeed, it would 57. provide that extra sharpness and belief for himself if he was going on to Nordic and Baltic tour darts as well. Yeah, I mean, if you go from the floor and then this jump here, and then you return 44. back to floor darts, you go back with so much confidence, it's so much easier. You feel so comfortable, don't you? 60. I've seen it with other players. When they've left here, they've gone on to other things and performed at very good levels. Daryl Pilgrim is a great 100. example of that. Yep. Played on the Pro Tour very recently. Got a couple of deep runs. Another result from Germany. 42. Van Dongen. Like you require Six, three winner over Connor Scott. Yeah. Jules has been playing properly the last couple of months. He might not save his tour card, but I tell you what, he's going to go down swinging. And you know, that's uh, Ned Flanders' favourite dart player from The Simpsons, Jules Van Dongen. Go on. Jules Van Diddley Ding Dang Dongen. <laughs> 82. Then you require one. Bit of an inside joke. No joke here. Tops, tops. I can't go for the tops now. We almost did it inadvertently. That would have been one of the weirdest dots we've ever seen. He was going for the 60 there, and he almost hit the tops with a skidder. 28. 
Lacing requires 60. Well, this is where the dart doesn't get in the way. Double 10. 40. Because you require 108. This is where sometimes he has the hot start and has a bad third or fourth leg and his average dives. Game but that shot the third is a leg. wonderful check out. I make that only second. His fifth. Fourth leg, it's Mindegas to throw first. Tom plus Game check out second of, of the today, week. isn't it? Yeah. In fact, that's his sixth then. I didn't count the one, one to hundred. Today. He's had a lot in that sort of low ton range. 100, 108, 109, 120 a couple of times now. Yep. And then that 154 from yesterday, which is one of his highlights of the week. Eighty. This is where you got to go for the throat. You got to be relentless and unsympathetic to what your opponent's going through. Yeah, because this is an opportunity for a big le leg different swing, isn't it? It is. Currently sitting at minus one. One hundred and one. If he can somehow grab a four nil and get to plus three, he would have a better leg difference than that of Bravazuski and Croft for now. But he will have played the same amount of matches as Croft. Was he has one in hand after this? Thirty seven. As to what the best result is for Borowskis, we will think about that in a minute as Leighton tattoos the board with the grip pattern of his dart, as you can see in that small 20. Oh, yeah. 100. That was no one again when the dart slaps the sizzle. Can't finish now. 104 remaining. 30. And I guess you require 83. Double 16. 51. That was such a good opportunity. And you require 4 84. Is he going to get another chance? Based on what we've seen so far today, he probably will. And he's had a nightmare on the ball if he hits the 14. Three darts at 32. 49. And it gives you a perfect 32. result. Go and that's what he gets. It only takes nine Lindenous minutes Borowskis. to dispatch of Leighton Bennett on this occasion. And that 4 0 win might just revive the chances of Mindaugas getting through this group. He goes to third position provisionally with a better leg difference than that of Ravazewski and Joe Croft. But when we come back, it will be Wazzy and Ursland in a very important game in the chasing pack.
Final second round match then. And it is a fairly large one for a lot of people in this group. If we discount Leighton Bennett because he's eliminated already, we look at Joe Croft, we look at Mindaugas Barauskas, who has just got to six points and a plus leg difference. And these two, they all have a firm eye on this match. The only person who is very comfortable at the minute is indeed Ryan Harrington. And if we do see a win for first Anton Ersland here, to first. Game he will on. be a firm favourite for qualification with three matches to go because he could open up a four-point cushion between himself and the other three. 85. Is it fair for me to say at this juncture that this is the biggest game of the group? Right at this second. Sure is. <clears throat> Real chance for it. Anton to just gap the field and give himself a, a little bit of a, a cushion. 28. A bit of a comfort blanket. Because his running, well, when you look at the, the pair of their running, Harrington against Brzezuski. 93. In a couple of games' times. And then Anton against Leighton. And unfortunately, the, the way Leighton's playing at the moment, you'd expect 45. Anton to win that one in handily. Which will then give him another advantage in terms of the leg difference. I just 100. wonder if Leighton Bennett could be dangerous a little bit later and just take a game off somebody like he did in the fourth round on Wednesday. Yeah, where he produced the 96 average and the 161 finish. 140. He won't want to finish the group with any with no points. That will yeah. be his motivation at the minute. But regardless of what the leg differences are for these players, Anton is just craving the two points just to have that, that cushion. Whereas if David wins, he would go to eight points alongside Ursland. And depending on the margin of the win, he could even be in front. At this stage, if you were Leighton, would you go back to the setup he used with the yellow flights that he used where he, he produced that 96 average? 160. I'd give it the full day with the flat lie and see how it materialises. 100. And it's only required 130. And if it doesn't work, if he doesn't get anything from it, then I think In when, the he start, when he starts playing after the weekend, just go back to where you were before. It's It's very risky doing something like that. I was behind it at the start, but there is a, a major risk with it that you, you might lose 49. your game. David, you, you might lose your 60. feel. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to me. I, I didn't change my throw 20. in any type of extreme 81. like that, but I started to sort of fiddle with it and then fell into a, a habit and couldn't remember how I threw them originally. Game shot the okay. first leg. 20 dart break, throw, Muslim. 81 finish. He's done that a few times this week. Yeah. The old two dark kills. Yeah, there's, there's little and combination shots. Game on. He seems to hit with regularity. It's when he ends up having three darts at a double, he ends up chasing. Hey, he won. Come into certain weeks and you think... 56. I think that person is going to win this week. At the start of week five, we all said, we think this is a great opportunity for Conor Heenahan and Owen Bates. Yep. It was a chance for us to get to know Anton and Benjamin from Group A a little bit more. They could both still be in Saturday night to maybe throw their own brand of darts in the mix. I'm still not 100% convinced who 60. I think is going to win this week, which is a good thing. But Owen Bates is the only person who has won a week here in Portsmouth before, indeed any week. And there was definite flashes of brilliance. I mean, my concern, well, not a concern, it's great for Ryan Harrington and Ryan Harrington fans is if he's remaining unbeaten, playing at the level he's 60. at, he finds another... 10, maybe 15% on his game. He's going to be super dangerous. Absolutely right. He'll be the man to beat. 
60. He is playing with just such confidence. And so you require 160. I'm I'm not even at sort of 60% and I'm still winning. A bit like being in the 200 metres. You've got 50 metres to go. You're looking around and you think, well, there's 10 metres behind me. You require 170. Fifty-six, and so you require one hundred. Oh, another ton plus effort here for Anton. He actually hasn't got this one this week. Eighty. He hasn't got it this time either. David, you require one hundred and fourteen. Travel eighteen. It Nine, just didn't feel eight. likely. Anton, you Based require on the way he's played so far today. Double 10 for Anton. It's another Game seven visit leg. leg. And he just had Anton to double Osnick. check with Owen. It was in, but only just. Yeah, it creeped in the top corner. Then it gets David to throw first. As long as it's between the wires. 100. You got a favourite Swedish sports star? Um, watching sport over the years? Boxer, athlete, footballer? Anybody like that that really springs to mind? 99. No, not one that instantly jumps out. I'm a big It'd fan be... of Alexander Isak, who plays for Newcastle. Hey, he's he's obviously, obviously. obviously. Superb footballer. But I'm a big admirer of Mondo Duplantis, the pole vaulter. And you consider the, the dominance of pole vaulters through the years, including the great Sergei Bubka. You oh, thought yeah. somebody's 100. not going to beat his records. Yeah, the then you've got it. Mr. Duplantis, who is just like Superman when it comes to the pole vault. I think Sweden should be very proud of him. 84. And he's only 23. Still got a long, long, 100. long time ahead of him in world athletics. I think Sweden's got such a great heritage with their sports and they've got such a great array as well dark players football players winter sports 136 track and field 120. they're really good at ice hockey too 100 and Sonia require 48 3 nil beckons this could be the ideal start double 16 40. David required 20. So far today, I'm seeing so many huge chances for people. Game shot on the third leg. And they're missing David out. David Wazowski. David is clinging on to this one. He could easily Four be in the dust. First. Game on. One hundred and forty. Kevin Hansen, he's a rallycross driver. Ah, okay. Eighty-five. I think the most famous worldwide is probably Zlatan Ibrahimovic. One hundred. Yeah. I think if you were to bottle his confidence. It would sell better than most soft 95. <laughs> I like it. And it's not just the male athletes either. They've got some tremendous female golfers like Anna Nordqvist. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of golfers Whoa, in there. Yeah, 180. The Swedish golf courses are very underrated. Got some beautiful course line amazing, up there. Amazing Swedish 56. poker players as well. They... Like There's only require 81. Obviously, motorsport in Sweden's absolutely huge. Rallying. Love their F1. Love their speedway. Game show. Oh, the they love player. their 81 checkouts and as well. <laughs> right, he couldn't take his 48 checkout in the previous leg, but he can take the, the 81 for 3 1. First. This game on. could have been done and dusted. 100. 
and talk about some of the other greats of Swedish football, for instance. You think about someone like Freddie Jungberg. Sorry to all of the Tottenham 60. fans, by the way, because I know he was an Arsenal great. But I've never been too bad at the old tennis as well. Wow. US Open Finals week. How about the great Bjorn Borg? Oh, there you go. Oh, no, so we've got that. And they do have the greatest ever female golfer in Annika Sorenstam. 41. She would be remembered from Solheim Cup fame as well, wouldn't yes, she? She won so many majors. She transcended 43. golf. She was put into some of the male events years ago and competed. Her and Michelle Wee were really, really big stars and, and given places in PGA Tour events because they were so 140. good. I still remember a shot that Annika Sorenstam played where she was about 60 yards away in a bunker and they thought, well, she's never going to get this up and down. No, she hold it. One of the most remarkable shots I've ever seen. 122. Oslund could do with a very good approach here. 140. Oh, David Rick, 136. And he does 96. get a look, does Anton. Anton, you require 120. Adds 120 to his ton plus collection. And to have a four point cushion between himself and the chasing pack. He now 100. needs Wazzy to miss. David, you require 40. Yeah, well, he's going to have to come all the way back to 501. Great guide. Double 10 has been great with his last start. 20. Not today, though. You fear the worst for Wazuski, for he's Croft, and for Mindy, because it could be Ursland on 10 points. He's missed more chances. He could have no won this score. game twice over. 20. Game and he has Fifa. to go back to 501. David Wazuski. Maybe making things a little bit more difficult for himself. He's got every right to See if it's Anton wipe his brow first. with the sweat because game I'm sure on. the anxiety is up there on the stage. Now there's no guarantee that he'll actually get the points. Sixty. Every player in this group this week has had a ton plus check out. We can't say that about Group B, because last night we had four ton plus checkouts from two players. Forty-five. Harry Gregory, Benjamin Jurius, and Trina Gulliver not getting a ton plus check out. One hundred. Just wonder what we're going to get from that group a little bit later tonight because there are people in very strong positions. Some people not so, but everybody's still involved. It's always a good thing going into the night session on Friday. One hundred and forty. It's a tidy one forty. Yeah, well timed and needed. That's his fifth of the contest. It's been a good scoring performance. The only thing that's let him down. 55. Or a few shots at double. It's actually still acceptable at 33% in this game for Anton. But when you consider the match darts he's missed, he may be kicking himself inside. 100. One hundred. Another opportunity presents itself. And so you require 156. Statistically, he is dominating this game. 88.19 is more than tidy enough. Needs a treble here, though, Paul. 60. And because he doesn't get 146. It makes the next shot a bit harder. 96. But like you said, Mace, he's someone who tends 96. to feel more comfortable on combinations than having three darts at a double. Let me see an example of that right here. Double eight. 
job done. Game shot and the match. Anton Erstand Anton gets the job done. 4-2. Does move on to 10 points in to second position. Plate 7, 1-5, plus 8. An average of 87-59. Just the 1-180 one, in there. Very tidy for him. 40% on the doubles. When we come back, which will be around about 3 o'clock, when we join our friends on Sporty, Tough, Sporty Stuff TV, it will be Baruskas against Croft. Well, seconds out. That's the end of round two here at the Super Series. And it is time to get the thoughts and analysis up here on the balcony of the asset, Paul Nicholson. Let's have a quick check of the results that we've seen from this afternoon session because two victories for Ryan Harrington coupled up with the results that we've seen just now means that he is safe and he is through to tomorrow night. Yeah, it's always a nice feeling to get through fairly early in a group. Now he can look towards his preparation for Saturday night with three games to go. Not so much comfort for Anton, even though he's won his first couple of games. He knows that if he wins his next game and things go his way in round three, he's going to be safe as well. But it just doesn't feel like it's going to be that easy. But Ryan hasn't played his best darts this week, but has still done a perfect job winning seven from seven. Well, let's have a look then at the tail of the tape and how he got through today. Two victories plus results elsewhere being enough to see him through. Well, that's the league table. That's confirmation of Ryan making his way through. 14 points compared to Anton Oslund's 10. Let's talk about Anton then because... You and Chris have rightly been praising him all week. You've liked everything about the way he goes about it, the throw, everything about it. And, and we're kind of seeing as the week goes along that all coming to the fore and maybe all the pieces of the jigs are just beginning to be pieced together. Yeah, slowly. I mean, you, you think about the movie Terminator 2 when uh, the T-1000 is slowly coming together as a, as a molten thing into a solid. I look at him that way because I think that all of the ingredients are there, but they're coming together slowly. 
You saw that 96 checkout at the end of that last match. We've spotted a pattern with our good friend Anton because combination shots look more comfortable for him than he is with three darts at double. He could have won that previous game three times over, but constantly missing shots, three darts at double 10, three darts at, you know, two darts at double 16, that kind of thing can't continue if he harbors ambitions of winning the week. How do you think David Wazuski is going to be feeling right now? Not very good. The first two rounds have not gone his way. He's lost ground. And if he harbours any chance of getting to Saturday, it's going to have to be perfect from here. It most certainly will. Right, we're going to take a short break here at the Moda Super Series. It's going to be resuming when we join our friends and colleagues over at Sporty Stuff TV from 3pm. That is just about enough time to get another Calippo, isn't it? I'm glad you've got time. I haven't. I've got to get ready for the next game. Well, we'll let Paul Nicholson <laughs> head down to the culture box, get his trainers on and get ready for all the commentary. We're back from three o'clock here on Sporty Stuff TV and on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. So don't go anywhere. We'll join you on the other side of these commercial messages. See you at three. <laughs> this is the Moda Super Series. One hundred and eighty.
Good afternoon. Welcome to the Motor Super Series from the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth. And a very good afternoon to viewers joining us here on Sporty Stuff TV, where the I's have been dotted and the T's look set to be crossed here in Group C at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. We've played six games already, two rounds worth of fixtures, and we can already confirm a player through to Saturday night. Ryan Harrington winning both of his matches and results elsewhere means that he is into tomorrow night's finale. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Anton Oslo and the Swedish star, a couple of victories for him means that he's on the cusp himself of making it into Saturday night. So, Harrington already through two Saturday night's finale. Two matches, two victories for him. It kicked off with a 4-1 success against the young star, Leighton Bennett. And that was then quickly followed up by success against Joe Croft, who's been highly, highly competitive this week. Right, so that is how Harrington got through. This is how the table looks then with uh, three more rounds of fixtures to go. Harrington on 14 points. He's safely through. Anton Oslund on 10 can actually make it through from the end of this round of fixtures considering and depending on what else happens in terms of results but in a very handy position four points ahead with six left to play for right next up for us it is Mendowskis Borowskis in action he takes on Joe Croft in our first game after the three o'clock cutoff and joining it the, the, in the commentary box uh, for all of this action it's Paul Nicholson and Chris Mason afternoon guys time for Mindy to try and take one out on Joe because before we joined our friends at Sporty Stuff TV, if you weren't able to see our first couple of rounds, we have seen big moves from Ryan Harrington and Anton Ursland. They sit very pretty at the top of the table. But Mindaugas now, who currently sits in third position, narrowly ahead of Joe Croft, the 30-year-old, this may just be the kind of fixture that stipulates who will stay alive and who will fall by the first. wayside. Game on! Yeah, mathematically, the loser of this match is still just about going to be able to qualify in that second position. <clears throat> but for me, 140. it will be a big ask because of the run-in. I think what we have to pay attention to now as well, because it has happened before. It happened to Willie Boland last week when he qualified. He started to just slow down a little bit and 100. relaxed a bit too much. If Harrington does that, we look at his fixtures and see where people can mop up. 100. Mindy might be going for the throat for the rest of the day because now if he gets six points and gets to 12, 97. he genuinely needs... Ursland to have a bad end and he needs to lose against Bennett in game nine. Yeah, and I just can't see that. We've seen 164. nothing from Bennett today or yesterday to suggest he's got anything in the lo 96. locker to trouble I mean, I Anton right now. Yeah, that's the biggest problem for the chasing pack. 60. So the four, four point gap that Joey, Anton has over Baruskas and Croft will be re-established. Irrelevant of who 52. wins here. And I guess you require 40. All you can do is your job. Game you can't play the Thursday. other games for other people. Mindigus you can take a 1-0 lead and you can run with it. Let's see what Mindy can do for the rest of the day. Can he go out swinging? It's first. meant to be. It will be. Oh, and like you say, all you can do is... Your 100. end of the bargain... And sometimes as well, if you are going to go out swinging, you can almost see it as an audition to try and get an invite back. Because if you put in some big numbers and some big performances, it will be noticed 95. by the organisers here at the Motor Super Series. Yeah, it's happened before. Although we do invite a lot of the players, the uh, big lump of the players in the group here, well, exactly half are via the ADC qualification system and representing ADC Europe. But we still do invite players back, of course. Now think about Conor Heenahan. He came through Joe, you 170. with the ADC system and he's been a mainstay ever since because he's been so good. 42. And I guess you require 81. Of course, we've got one of the originals playing in 
next week's Thursday and Friday 56. groups in Chas Barstow. 128. Yeah, Thursday and Friday night, Chas. Bullseye. 103. I think it's required 25. No reward. Double eight for two now. Can he use it? 17. Not quite. Show you required 25. What's he going to do with 25? <laughs> he knows that that was really close to hitting a 20. Game shot That's a the lovely shot from Joe. Joe Croft. Good start to the match yeah, the from both. The closer this is, the, the worse it is. The yep. first. Absolutely, the better it is for Anton. He's currently on plus eight. One hundred and five ahead of his nearest rival in terms of leg difference, which is Baraskas right now. I think what's 94. really fascinating to me as well, Mace, is that we have had some weeks in the past where people from overseas have booked hotels for the Sunday 100. night before their first day until the Saturday morning. And when they qualify for Saturday, they have to somewhat drastically go and find a hotel 100. room somewhere. And during the football season, finding a hotel room in Portsmouth is difficult. Yep. 60. Won't be too bad this weekend, will it? Because it's international weekend. Do Portsmouth have international players in their side? 140. I think the right person to ask is Henry. He's a local. 41. I think he supports Everton and Waterloo, doesn't he? He does. All right, he's not going to get the 167, but he wants a... 59. Sometimes the approach play can, he can be a little bit more careful on. 40. Joey you require 108? Well, he had 90 left with a dart in the way of the 54. 86 left. In yeah. that spot, I like treble 20, double 15. Because look at the size of the stems 26. in the flight. Because you require 120. Lot in the way. Agreed. He loves a 120. Not this time. So 41. Should be ball for Joey double 16, 82. 25, 17 tops. Game shot in the third leg. Very, very Joe pretty. Croft. Take your pick. What was the better dart? Dart one or dart three? I'll be happy with either well, answer. Joe to throw first. Game on. Over in Germany, Dylan Seven got the better of Jeffrey de Graaf, 6 4. Right now, De Decker up against Kovacs. Big fan of De Decker. I think he's made massive strides over the last 12 months. Did you know that Patrick Kovac is actually a professional dart player? He doesn't have a hey, job. One. You don't see a great deal of him playing things like Challenge Tour and things like that, but he is solely a professional player. Financial situations in Central Europe are very different. You can win a lot of money 100. playing local tournaments in that part of the world. Steel and, it, tip. And, and it could last a long time. No, you buy a decent house in that part of the world for about 80 grand. Not the case in the UK. I'm going to buy a parking space. Garage door. 100. <laughs> Would be fitted though. 100. I remember back in the day there used to be tournaments 80. where you'd win a Win a meat hamper. Christmas, you'd win a turkey. 40. Be an absolute nightmare of a prize for a vegan. <laughs> and you can 100. have the basket it comes in. You require 40. That's a bit meagre. Double 10. 20. Can't find his way to 3 1. And I guess you require 80. Baroskas has had chances to win every leg. He's making a real meal of this. I like that play. 34. Joey required 20. Doesn't expect to return. Just a little bit of a shuffle. 
And that's Game's exactly why he did it. 3-1 Croft. Three hits from 11. Mid-80s average. A little bit of discomfort on the stage, as you can see. Just trying to shuffle his shirt into a comfortable position. It's very muggy today. It's not necessarily hot. It's outrageously humid. It's almost as if there's a storm coming. And it might be happening on Saturday night under this roof. One hundred. Croft currently at three one up is projected to go to third position. He could be two points behind Usland. And then he would become the biggest Leighton Bennett fan in the world. Forty five. Joe's running includes a game against Bennett and Erstland. He just sensed that that game against Anton is going to be massive, but only if he wins this game. 180. Brilliant. Mindy goes to require 84. He refuses to submit here in this leg. 72. And if he can click the 1 2 1. Require 120. Job done. Game, game yeah. on. 14. 93. Had he not he shuffled, he 12. might have hit that. Yeah. Double three, bottom of the board. Or he'll be back. No score. What a chance this is. Joey the ideal scoreline. One. Go he gets the job done. The Break a throw in Joe the last Croft. leg. And a win by four legs to one means that Joe Croft does go to third position and he hurdles Borowskis for the time being. That's the end of game seven. But now we turn our attention to the one person who is definitely in Saturday night. That's Ryan Harrington. He's taking on Wazzy, who is in real peril on the table. If he doesn't win... He's gone. Hey, I'm Gary Ashburn, and I've been working in the world of collecting with the memorabilia for over 30 years. I'd love you to join me every Sunday night at 10 p.m. for Collectibles Guru, where we showcase awesome items from the world of sport, music, TV, and film. You'll hear the stories behind the genuine signatures and get a front row seat into the world of sport and showbiz. So tune in every Sunday night at 10 p.m. only here on Sporty Stuff TV. the best thoroughbred racing from South Africa alongside 15 live Greyhound races at 11 o'clock every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday morning live here on Sporty Stuff TV.
Up next, table topping Ryan Harrington, yet to be defeated in Group C, up against, well, the man who was favourite to win this group, David Wazuski. Here is Ryan, 33, from Chelmsford, nicknamed The Animal, up against 46-year-old David Wazuski from London, nicknamed Wazzy. First leg, it's Ryan to throw first. Game on. A bit easier to say than his surname, isn't it? It's like the Chizzy one. David Chisniewski. <laughs> 60. A change of shirt here for Wazzy. He did say that he was going to change at some point because of the 60. slightly humid conditions here in Portsmouth. But so far today... It hasn't gone his way at all. Losses yeah. of four legs to one and four legs to two. And both games have been lost with the darts as well. Yeah, well, a change of sh shirt. Create a change of fortune. Well, what was weird 26. yesterday is that when he changed his shirt, he lost both games. Then he went back to the previous one and won again. With his best performance. Yeah. 60. So he's obviously not superstitious. The shirt I played poorly in would be going in the bin. And the other one would have been gone straight in the laundry. 83. So it's nice and fresh for Friday. Or maybe up on eBay. 70. Well, we didn't mock Ryan yesterday. We just made note of the fact that he just never seems to wear black trousers. James Wadey. 95. Yeah, he was the... The one that really, when the black trousers rule was in full force, that he said, I'm going to wear grey. I'm going to be a rebel. Well, it all changed. 85. And we can go back. You'll remember this. Tommy Cox said, well, you can't wear the same colour shirt because people at home won't know the difference. Well, it's not football, Tommy. And then, of course, certain Peter Wright created the snake bite image. And all of that went out of the window. Yeah, I remember his first world final back in 2014 Four and the outfit three. that he wore. Ryan requires First time I saw it, I thought, well, that is something to behold. Can you believe that in four months, that was 10 years ago? Wow. Well, I can remember the, the shock when the 41. golfers started wearing the more outlandish... Trousers. 97. Ryan required 32. I take it you're referring to modern day as opposed to the, the 70s versions of trousers that they had. Yeah. Well, this is a difficult double eight for Ryan. No score. And there's the proof of it. David, you require 40. There is a risk in the knowledge that he is through that his adrenaline levels might fall a little bit and his form could flop. 20. Yeah, I think he... Ryan I think he 32. will be mindful of wanting to win all 10, 10 games and go through the card. He's that type of guy. Game shot on the first leg. Ryan he'll Harrington. He'll switch off at all. Yeah, I like to think so. Because if I was in his position, I'd be thinking, I want all so 20 points. David to throw first. John Game Daly on. used to wear some Larry uh, outfits, didn't he, on the golf course? Yeah, just a bit. 80. Flagged type trousers. Well, he was he was Larry full stop, wasn't he? I remember, Still is. I remember the 1995 Open <clears throat> Championship like it was yesterday when he beat Costantino Rocker in a playoff. 44. And there were people the year before that at the Dunhill Lynx Championship Whoa, who tipped John Daly to win the Open the following year because he played so well at St Andrews the previous season. And they were right. I'm not going to forget about the trousers in the 70s, the, the flares and the, the leather shoes. and Oh, that was a style. 100. I mean, that, that style of Jack Nicholas around 72 with the yellow jumper and, oh, that's, it, it's iconic. Well, a lot of fashion has come through golf over the years. 82. David Evercore, 141. Always been, well, on the money, golfer has always been so smart and... The world 82. Now, I think the most fashionable person in this place is Abby when she's here. Yeah, she's got her own own look. 
Yeah, nobody's inherited that look on the Oki yet, though. Nobody's going for the full you know, Groovers in the Heart look. 49. <laughs> David Rocco on 59. Challenge laid down. Game shot on the second leg. David was oh, 14 dot leg there for David. That's much better. His leg difference at the minute is sitting the at is minus two. Close. It's not that far away from that of Croft, Borowskis in the chasing pack, but it is 10 behind that of Ersland, who plays against Leighton Bennett next. That's the biggest problem for the chasing pack. He's got that 84. element of comfort and the fact that he's playing the person in sixth position next. Things could be sewn up very quickly. 60. Yeah, and that will be the eighth cycle of matches completed when Anton takes on Leighton in our next game. So there'll only be four points available. So Anton with a win over Bennett. And if he can make it a big win, 60. we'll have one foot in finals night. And not like we... 60. Don't want to say it, but me and Nico told you so. Most of the time, we do know what we're talking about. 85. We weren't entirely convinced. You know, I'm saying that really loosely. We weren't convinced that David was the favourite for this group. Ryan and he was, wasn't he? Before the off. Yesterday, he was the 9-4 to four favourite. Joe was 13-5, to five, which raised our eyebrows. Roger Moore style. Just remember, if you're having a flutter today, begambleaware.org is where you 60. need all of your information. Running require 98. It is over 18s only, and gamble responsibly, please. Fifty-eight. David you require one hundred and fifty-one. Sixty-three. Running require forty. Tops for two one. Game shot on the third Pins leg. It. Ryan Harrington. Not for the first time in this group C. He's behind in terms Four of David Tetro first. Averages. But ahead. In the important column. 100. I cannot ever remember in my time in covering Group C seeing someone so dominant with such low numbers. I mean that with all... 84. All sincerity, really, because he's averaging 70 here. He's still leading the match. He won his first game with a 69. 41. And he was pretty good against Joe Croft in winning with an 84. Sometimes you get people in this secondary group in a week and they go crazy. 26. Yep. Willie Boland a week ago was pretty good. He tailed off towards the end but he got the job done but he was putting in 90 averages and some good accompanying stuff. 81. It's almost as if Ryan is seeing every single weakness in every player and is just finding a way through. It's like he's got cheat codes. Hey, yeah, he's just, he's just focusing. Well, he's doing what he should be doing, focusing on what he has to do, and that's win matches. They turn into points. 100. And they ultimately turn into prizes. Something else is different on the stage as well. Was he's throwing three yellow flights. Maybe 46. he got them off of Leighton. So don't give them a go. Apart from they're a different shape. Yeah, he did have one pink one in there. Maybe he just had one pink one left and he wanted to make sure it got used. The Decker through 6 1 comprehensively against Kovacs. That's pretty good for his chances of making the World Grand Prix. David requires 70. Race for that will end in three weeks' time. Game and that leg has just ended. Leg. David Wazuski. Yep, on the back of a 77 finish. Two apiece on throw. Fifth leg, it's Ryan to throw first. Game on. That's what's bringing his averages down, Ryan, because he's having an off leg on the opponent's throw and being left way back in that particular leg. 45. After 15 darts thrown, he still wanted 197. 
You know, Ryan became a father in the last couple of years, and I can't even sympathise or understand what it's like having the drive and the passion to want to do this, as well as having a job and a family, because I've always been a bit of a... 94. A sole survivor when it comes to my career. I would always do whatever I wanted. Never had a family of my own, so... I've really had to think much about what's happening elsewhere. I've always had that tunnel vision. I can't really understand what he's going through at the minute, trying to prioritise family life and and finances before getting back into it. Well, look at Sean McDonald, perfect example. He's a 52, David Rickwire, 100. Youth master, and it didn't quite work out for him, so remained in uni and. 60. Ryan much McCoy, focused on family life and his career. And now allows himself one weekend a month to play as a, for his own enjoyment. 38. David Rickwire, 110. For the lead. To stay in the race. 86. Only just. Ryan McCoy, 126. But can Harrington find a way through? Oh, that just knocked into the treble seven. 48 left. 48 left indeed. Just got caught. 85. David required 20. By the deflection. His unbeaten run about to come to an end. Oh, wow. 12. How close was that? Ryan in require 41. Well, he missed the 16 for double 16, so now has to come back. Gets the nine. Game well, Ryan fifth, Harrington eh? might as well change his Ryan name to Harrington. Shannon Doherty because he's charmed. Or Alyssa Sigma Milano, or one of the other ones. First. Because every single time that someone misses their chance and chances this week, 38. Ryan Harrington is there to gobble it up. He's like a pigeon with corn kernels on the floor. Hey, and one. it's an excellent thing to have in your locker, to be that opportunistic player saying to yourself, if you miss, I will hit. 43. He's become a bit of an annoyance to the entirety of Group C. Not playing well, but still getting results. 180. And then this is what he does. He just goes through the gears in this particular leg and walks off with the win and the two points. Thanks very much. Maybe he's saving it all in the 57. Locker for Saturday night. It does feel like he's only in about third gear and he's got six of them. 100. But if this leg does go the way of Ryan Harrington, which is extremely likely now, Wozuski will stay on six points and, 140. and be ten points behind Ryan and four behind Ursland. He will be definitively 100. eliminated with an Ursland win in the next match, which coincidentally is the end of round three. 56. Running required 40. Double top. Twenty. Just teasing us. <laughs> He's getting value for money. Fifty eight. Running required twenty. Double ten. Top bins. Top of the board. 15. He'd rather have hit the 12 there, I think. Yeah, there was a case for maybe the single two to come 140. back. 140. Three McCormick darts in five. hand at double four. And I don't like this. Go Fortunately, he does, and I'm not playing. As Ryan, Ryan Harrington does make it eight from eight, moves on to 16 points, six clear of Anton 
Ursland, who is in action in our next match. There are the numbers. 70 average for Harrington, enough for a 4-2 win. And Anton will be taking on Leighton Bennett in our next match. Final straight. Your horse is challenging for the lead. The victory is so close you can taste it. This magnificent animal giving everything for his jockey. And in the last strides, your horse is beaten. Fortunately, with Coral, you'll get a free bet up to £10 if your horse finishes within a length of the winner. Available every day of the season. Coral. Welcome back. Up next, Leighton Bennett taking on Anton Ursland. And a win here for Anton. And he is in pole position to qualify for Saturday night's final alongside Brian Harrington. He's currently on 10 points plus 8. His nearest rival is Joe Croft on 8 points plus 2. Now let's have a little look at the running. Very little pressure on Leighton here because it simply hasn't gone his way. In fact, the exact opposite way of that Anton to throw first. of Ryan Harrington, who is Game undefeated. On. Boom Boom has yet to have any sort of boom in a winning capacity in Group C. But this is where things get really interesting because at the minute... One hundred. We have lots of Leighton Bennett fans in the practice room. If he can somehow find a win, his first win in this 85. group, it will mean that Ursland's next game against Joe Croft will be fascinating. However, if Ursland wins and goes to 12 and then goes 100. on to beat Joe Croft in game 11, bye-bye, birdie. <laughs> yeah, we will know three. Of our six for tomorrow night. We know Connor Heenahan's through. We know Ryan Harrington's through. We just don't know who he's taking with him. I'll say one thing. One hundred and forty. But the way things are going for the blondes this week, pretty good. One hundred and twenty-five. Antonio Raquire, one hundred and twenty-five. Maybe three non-blondes out of the other. Out of the other group. Fancies it. 88. Probably shouldn't have done that. No, but well, he has made comments before that he will go for his shots. 180. Antonio required 33. Ultimate stacking there from well, Leighton. He, he went for the ball with three darts in hand, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Cost him the match. Don't do that again. This is a big shot now. It's not really about Game leg difference for Anton. Leg. His is already Anton healthy. Osland. All he has to do is keep racking up the points. And so far, so good. That was a really nice Second start there to throw from Anton. It was a lovely adjustment, wasn't it? On the... Well, it was too close to be 60. a marker, but he found a way around it. And he's doing exactly what he's done the last few days against Leighton Bennett. He's controlling the pace of this game. 100. And that was something we picked up on early in the week in Group A. Against the quicker players, he will not be rushed. He doesn't go excessively 25. slow. 
he will just go through procedure, approach the Oki, throw his darts at the exact same tempo. 60. This week, Leighton's had a few nightmares against certain players. Particularly, funnily enough, Baroskas. He's actually lost in the last four days. 12-3. Wow, 97. And as far as he's concerned against Anton Usland, 85. He's lost 8-1 on Tuesday and Thursday, but he did get a very good win against him on Wednesday. By four legs to two. That 100. was head and shoulders above everything he's done this week. Which is what makes this approach so mystifying. 100. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 144. I think these two have built up a, a bit of a friendship though, haven't they? It seems that way. But you've got to get rid of your friends. That's Going a second 144 of the week from Uslan. And it looks exactly Usland. the same as the first. Yeah, if we looked on the highlights, you could use either one for that. <laughs> Delegate Anton to throw first. Just another ton plus finish. Game on. Up to ten now. That's seven starting the day. That's at least two that I can count. Yeah, so far today. Forty-two. No, he had a ninety-six. Forty-four ton plus. Oh, that's interesting. I thought I'd already snagged one. Well, at least he's got one today, as opposed to yesterday, where he got none. 97. That's right. Didn't pick one up yesterday. Seven in Group A, though. This is not good news for everybody else. 39. This might be the portion of the day where Anton's playing his best stuff. It's been a bit up and down, but when he's up, he's very up. Well, he, he could be in a position that winning 100. his final two matches could become irrelevant because of the scoreline. Or is it something to do with using new flights? Can we take all the credit? Yeah, you mean ones that are actually flat? Yeah, it makes all the difference, you see. Having prime equipment that isn't curved in the flight department. You've got to store them properly. You can't just leave them on the side. You've got to put them in a case where they are cushioned by form. And it keeps them in, sh in perfect shape. Indeed it does. These companies provide cases for these flights to sit in so that they don't curl. Yeah, because I think he's using the, the Cosmo Fit Flights, isn't he? I, these ones are slightly softer than the ones I used to use. And they used to, like I say, used to go in a, in a plastic case that would keep them completely square. Speak to any builder. Do you think they're going to be happy with the brickwork being 10 mil out? Six. No. Just throw in their trowel in the back of a van. Take care of the tools and they will take care of you. 56. That's not too bad. You know that when he comes back, he's going to go for trouble 12. That's been his approach all week. Alan does that, doesn't she? She does. 58. She has had. Antonio Raquin, 52. Double top. 42. No for if he's going to miss this 60, Lady he wants it just underneath, based on the way he's throwing today. Not that far underneath and to the left. 43. Antonio Require, 10. Seen a lot of people on double five this week, but it is a symptom of missing other doubles first. Game shot. Doesn't miss this one. It's 3 0. And Ostland. this is turning into the strongest daily campaign of Ursland's week. Four flag, it's Leighton to throw first. 140. There is that deliberate walk straight over, then through to the Oki. He will not be rushed. And I think at his age, that is showing a very mature 60. mind. Some people would be easily ushered into 
that faster paced game, myself included in my early days. Yeah, even when we took a look at him, and I go all the way back as, as far as Monday. His opening match, he lost 4 2 with an 82 average, but no, missed 14 at a double. And from that point on, we were saying to ourselves, I think we've got a player here. 50. And I had a couple of text messages from people saying, what are you seeing that I'm not? And I said, well, here's the example. Listen, when you got the fundamentals down... 134. And you're capable of hitting those... Ton plus finishes with 45. such regularity. It's only a matter of a time before you start to produce the goods. He's produced it over the last couple of days. I think it's one of the reasons why we are sometimes called experts. 60. Because we can see some of the things that make great players. And Anton's got a lot going for him. 60. Anton, you require one. Don't throw compliments like we have for Anton lightly. Absolutely not. Not as well. Okay. 101. That works. Right, require 126. Well, at least he's taking the bullseye out of the equation. 86. Because, like Chris said earlier in the week when he left 50. He yeah. went straight for it. Antonio require 49. This time he doesn't need to do that. What he needs to do is get the job done. 17. Double 16. For 4 nil. He did this in the first leg of the contest. But he doesn't 17. do it in the fourth. Leighton require 40. Double top for Leighton. Game shot oh, the fourth. Just there. when you think it's a blocker. Leighton Bennett. It's amazing how many times you see that now where it just skids through and finds a way underneath. Yeah, I just. Well, I just if don't understand how that's gone in. First. Game on. Defied physics. If you study physics and you're watching this, please explain it to us. But what that does is it gives no, Leighton his so. first leg since the first match of the day. Usland is currently projected to go to 12 points. 95. And you've got to say at this point that Ryan Harrington is just a matter of legs away from winning the group. 134. Well, he's in action next against Mendegas. 58. The win there will make it 9 from 9. Not many people have gone through the card twice 60. in Group C. I think the first time I ever saw it was Kevin Burness in Southampton. But that was a, a campaign where he set a personal best 45. record average of over 117. He was in super hot form at that point. Yeah, I'm not sure on reflection how he will have... Well, his 100. campaign has gone on on the Pro Tour. Yeah, I spoke to him at the airport on the way to Germany a couple of weeks ago, and he's very no, philosophical he about it. He said, I'm not playing poorly. It's just so everybody's really good. Yeah, I think at the time in, though, when the introduction of the seniors, the way he was playing at the time. If he does lose his card and 54. he doesn't get it back. Our game. Welcome back. Twenty-four. Oh, that might be that. Fifty-six. Antonio Barquin, fifty-six. Remaining for a four-one win for the Swede to have more points in the bank and more comfort in the table. Double sixteen. Game very, shot and very the match. accomplished. Anton he now has six points for the day. Just like Ryan Harrington, who he will play in his last game of the day. Before that, he's got a really important game against Joe Croft in game 11. And before we get to that, Harrington will play Borowskis next. But we're very close to a conclusion here in Group C. We'll take a short break and we'll be back soon.
Hey, I'm Gary Ashburn, and I've been working in the world of collectibles and memorabilia for over 30 years. I'd love you to join me every Sunday night at 10 p.m. for Collectibles Guru, where we showcase awesome items from the world of sport, music, TV, and film. You'll hear the stories behind the genuine signatures and get a front row seat into the world of sport and showbiz. So tune in every Sunday night at 10 p.m., only here on Sporty Stuff TV. Welcome back to the Motors Super Series, where before the break, Anton Oslin got the better of Leighton Bennett by four legs to one, a big victory for the Swedish player. Elsewhere in the previous round of fixtures, Ryan Harrington got the better of David Wazuski by four legs to two, and Joe Croft got the better of Mindauskas Borowskas by four legs to one. So that is the results, and this is how the table looks in Group C. Ryan Harrington, we knew that his passage through to the finals was secured on 16 points, and Anton Osland is almost there he can possibly touch saturday night now the european qualifier from sweden joe croft needs to win his last two matches to stand a chance of that right next up for us it is mindauskas borowskas he is in action now uh, he takes on ryan harrington the man who is top of the pile the man who is going to be into saturday night and in the commentary box paul nicholson is alongside chris mason thanks henry that last game from Anton Usland has ensured that three people are now eliminated from this group. First leg, it's Mindaugas Barowskis has had a debut week Game here on. in week five of Series 5, but now he knows that he can't make Saturday in his debut week. Same goes for Wazzy, and Leighton Bennett was indeed 61. eliminated a little bit further back in the schedule. So it's down to two with Usland and Joe Croft playing each other next. 180. As for the others, they have two games left to do some damage and then they will leave us. 32. Yeah, I'm sure on reflection for Roskus. Well, every time I've gone into the... Players area. He's always had a smile on his face. He's absolutely loved his time here. 96. You want to go out with a bit of a bang. Like you say, he wants to leave an impression. I'd certainly like to see him back as his game evolves and he improves. Yeah, we might indeed see him before the end of the year or into the early part of 2024. Yeah, for those that do play here. They you get two opportunities. You get one full week where you start on the Monday, and then if you get a second bite of the cherry, you only ever get a Group B or a Group C. But it does depend on how well you play. I think the way that ninety-seven Mendogas has sixteen conducted himself this week will win him a lot of fans. Yeah, absolutely, he's performed as best he Eight. can and with an impeccable amount of professionalism. He's doing one thing in this game that drives me mad. The flight he's using, it they belong Eight. in the bin. 90. Now, it can't be that bad because he's Minigus just won the Borowskis. first leg, but look at the ends of the flights. It just <laughs> gives me so much angst. They look like they've been Second chewed by rabbits. <laughs> 
Maybe Taylor's been using them and having a good chomp on them. I do believe that in the practice room, there is a box there oh, with a whole host of yes. used flights. I think he's been delving. Look at those beautifully constructed, fresh flights from Ryan's darts. That's Fit what I like to see. Yeah, he's 1-0 down. <laughs> what would you rather have? Chewed flights or a 1-0 lead? Hey, T3. That's something that Phil Taylor was noted for, wasn't it? Chewing the flights when he was under pressure. Yeah, when it, that was his tell. One hundred and eighty. Not too often. One hundred and thirty-three. Yeah, only got chewing his flights once. Once at the match play at ten or. Ninety-five. I'm sure, there's a lot of players out there at the minute who wish they had had the opportunity to play him. I think we can count ourselves very fortunate that we had so many battles with 60. the power. Well, I wouldn't call battles, but I, <laughs> I played him a few times. Experiences. <laughs> 43. Yeah, it was a... On, at the time, it was horrid, but now looking back, I think, well, I was sort of there during that incredible era. 140. Ernie Els is probably Ernie thinking the same about Tiger Woods. Yeah. Great to play against him, but my word, he cost me some titles. 57. And I guess you require 2 0 for Mindy. He could be the backbreaker in this group. He could be the person who stops the Ryan Harrington train. Game shot in the second. There you go. He's won eight straight games in this group. It might stop right there if Mindy's got anything to do with it. Now look, it's Ryan to throw first. Game on. He's breaking a hold. Halfway there, being the first man to defeat this man in a Group C 96. campaign. When you consider some of the averages that Ryan's had today, he has been susceptible. 69.34 in a 4-1 win in the first game. 84 flat 100. to beat Joe Croft. And then 70.26 to beat Rizuski. Yeah, my only counter-argument is that his 100. opponents... Have allowed him to get away with it. Where, well, Baruska's averaging exactly eighty-seven, which is the number of the day. He's he's hey, playing he better, and but so is Ryan. Ryan's got his average up to eighty-five. Do you know what? I'm a big fan of the number eighty-seven because it is the number of my favourite hockey 66. player, Sidney Crosby. So maybe it's got something to do with that, but it keeps cropping up today. Forty. Harrington may well be doing or playing as James Wade. He's just reactive and reactive to what's going on in front of him. Yeah, it's not a bad way to play. You do get the sense that if someone lifts their game, he's going to lift 100. with them. One hundred. I never quite an example of it right here. One hundred. Lovely single. A lot of assurance in that single twenty because there was big. Well, I'm like you on shots like fifty or fifty-six when it goes on right plumb 40. in the middle of the single number. I like that. Double ten. Game shot. Yeah, it's a very tidy day. seventeen daughter, Ryan isn't it? Ryan Harrington. I'm sure, there are people out there. In the data sphere, who are thinking... Well, like it's Mindegus to throw first. Game on. Why didn't I have a little wager on Ryan winning every game? Maybe there are people out there thinking, come on, Ryan, because I have. 100. If you'd have said to me on Thursday morning that Harrington would be playing his ninth game of the group and he'd be undefeated, I would have said, well... 135. He really must have turned up. But it is something to be proud of. 140. Knowing that you've dominated a group, whether it be with great play or just good enough play. 58. How many times this week have we seen Borowskis 
start really promising, but has been reeled 100. in. One hundred. Yeah, that's that's something he needs to. That's a psychological thing that you need to deal with, where your throw doesn't get forty affected by what's going on in front of you. One hundred and sixty-one. He might not be reeled in. He was in two minds. Do you want to go for it? That's oh, that's a great, great 21. leave. It's one for the highlight reel, isn't it? Why not? Well, he obviously wanted to hit the ten to leave tops. 41. And I guess you require 40. Game there shot you go. It was the right player. I know he went for the ball. I'm just kidding you. But it is a 13 data. Takes Horowskis' average to 89.71. One of his better performances of the week. His best overall, 93.77. That seal ceiling of performance. For me, that's got to 100. go up by a good 5 to 7% for him to start contending on a more consistent basis on numerous tours. That might be enough to get you through 58. some of the titles on the Nordic and Baltic Tour, of which he's got one. But here, the strength and depth is just a little better. So you might need 58. that high 90s style average a bit more. Yeah, certainly on the, on the Challenge Tour. Some of the averages you see on the Challenge Tour these days. 134. It's like some of the averages we used to see on the Pro Tour 10 years ago. Yeah. 100. Well, thinking about that on the development tour, we've seen Owen Bates, who you'll see more of tonight from 10 o'clock when he plays Rhys Griffin in game one. He's averaged 120 on that tour this year. Yeah, that's remarkable. Good darts from Mindy. Runner Back in touch. 82. Ryan desperately doesn't want to lose this streak. Six. Mindy takes out the 110. He will. 110. Yeah, it'd be 4 1 with a 90 plus average. There's a 60. Double 16. 94. How many times have I said 16. this week? He's had his chance. Game show and Mr. Fifth, Bullet Dodger. Ryan Harrington. That is Boris. Ryan Harrington. I'm just going to call him Boris. Might as well. I can't paraphrase the movie. Six it's it's a little bit blue. First. Game on. <laughs> but it's just impossible to beat this guy. It feels like it right now, doesn't it? <laughs> 55. I'm going to have Even to if count... you run him over. <laughs> I'm going to have to count up how many match darts have been missed against him in the last couple of days. If he goes undefeated. Eighty-five. He does have a game with Ostland in game 13. And Ostland would love to be the person to break that streak. 140. Oh, 13's an unlucky number. Clutching at straws. And there's only been one world title won on double 13. 100. In the history of the game. The second most neglected double on the board. The first being double 17. 140. John Lowe back in 93. Winning on double 13. Well, that was against Allen, wasn't it? The awful 100. Final. Yeah, it wasn't. It was a classic for different reasons because of what was happening in the sport. Well, he, he, well, he, he missed so many doubles, didn't he? And Similar to what Eric did in 87. Cami Menzies is through over in Germany. Because you've got 124. The narrowest of margins getting a 6-5 win over Darius Labanauskas. Lithuanians playing all over Europe at the minute. 98. Ryan, you've got 116. Oh, look, it's double 13. And he's going to get a chance at it. 86. You, guess you left it. He Game hits it. Shot the He's match. the first person to Mindy beat Ryan Brown's Harrington good. in the group. It doesn't do him any favours because he's still not going to progress. 
but Ryan's streak of eight consecutive wins stops right there. And Mindy can be very proud of that performance. Over 91 the average, and he took his chance in the end on double 13. So when we come back, it is time for Joe to take on Anton. The winner could be still in the group. If Anton wins, he's through. Catch the best thoroughbred racing from South Africa alongside 15 live Greyhound races at 11 o'clock every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday morning live here on Sporty Stuff TV. is challenging for the lead. Victory is so close you can taste it. This magnificent animal giving everything for his jockey. And in the last strides, your horse is beaten. Fortunately, with Coral, you'll get a free bet up to £10 if your horse finishes within a length of the winner. Available every day of the season. Coral. Are you all ready for this? Because we are. Joe Croft must win this game if he stands any chance of getting through this group and into his first Saturday night. But on debut as well, Anton Ersland wins this game. He's there with a game to spare. And he could then enjoy his game with Ryan Harrington in game 13 in the knowledge that he's going to grace the finals night in his first appearance here in Portsmouth. Yeah, it'll be interesting Joe to see how it deals with the pressure, ironically. Best performance of the day in the last one from Ryan, and he loses. I'll never work this game out. One hundred. He's probably feeling a bit funny about it as well. But it is congratulations to Ryan. He's through. He has been for a while. But this is fascinating to me. 58. What we saw in Group A could serve as a bit of a warning to Anton. He saw Rhys Griffin hey, lose his last two matches and get pipped at the post. Yep. He doesn't want that to happen to him. By Conor Heenahan. Well, there's three of them on 20 points, wasn't there? Conor Heenahan. 100. Ben and Rhys. Closely followed by... 
85. The man about to take to the hockey now, Anton. It's a particularly Nine, dangerous fixture playing Joe at this time of the day. Because if you remember yesterday when he was playing in round four, he had his best stuff on his locker. I believe in things like that. That people like certain times of day to play it. Or the amount they've played building up to it. Absolutely right. And how relaxed you feel by that point. 96. We'll talk about the difference that they have in legs. The secondary separator after the points. 60. When it comes to the it's end only of this leg. Because we have to watch Anton have a crack at the 148 first. Just misses out. Good try. 116, Joe. You've got 120. This is going to have to be some traversing of the hockey. Back to the other side, maybe. One just misses. Yeah, just clips the bottom wire. Antonio Raquin, 32. Three in hand for a break of throw. And this has been 16. an issue. Joey Raquin, 20. Double five. Game Pressure on doesn't tell on dart one there Joe for Joe, who could definitely use not just the win, but a win by a distance. He currently sits first. at plus Game two on. in that category. Ursland plus 11. So with nine between them, he's craving 60. a big gap. 4 one 4 nil would be ideal. Yeah. Has to be around that kind of margin. 81. If it's not, Ursland might only need a certain amount of legs. What? Leighton's, Leighton is the opponent for Joe in the final game, isn't 60. he? 60. Where Anton has to play Ryan Harrington, who will be keen to right 60. the wrongs from his last game. This ain't over yet, folks. I'm sure that our friends in Sweden will be feeling particularly nervous at the minute. 101. Stefan Lord is still having a wee 60. libation in his bar over in Thailand. He might be feeling a little bit jittery for his friend Anton. Twenty-eight. Darts can do funny things to you when you are a little bit unsure and when you're yeah. in unknown territory as well. When you're a little bit edgy, everything starts 41. to just break down a little bit. The timing of the release, the speed of the throw. Your whole mentality changes. Greats, of course, can play through that. It's second nature. Forty. Classified as being comfortable with being uncomfortable. I love that. 99. When you work in the sports industry, you're, you're constantly put in front of cameras, in front of people asking you questions, put into pressure situations to 96. perform. 96. And it yeah, becomes a way of life. 60. The yeah. more you do it, the more you get used to it. Yep, you get, I get, I'll, I'll ask that question more than anything. I've, 42. How do you cope? And it's just, it becomes second nature because you do it all the time. You, you don't think about it. You don't eliminate nerves either. You just work with them. Yeah. I'm, when I played recently 60. in the World Seniors, I was, I was just like 180. going up there for the very first time, where before I'd, I actually used to quite enjoy it. 58. Last couple of times, and scared to death. 56. Double top. 46. That is Joey now five missed starts at double. Double top for Joe. 40. Oh, he thought that was in. 
And it's on your and record, if you right? closed your eyes and heard the clatter of the flights together, you probably thought it was too. I'm a great believer, Nick. I'm not sure about you, but if you're if you're nervous, it's because you Five. have expectations. Joe, you're required you want to You don't want and to you, fail. And you think you can do it. Game shot on the second. Eh? Never be afraid to be good. Well, that's a break of throwing 25 darts, and that's a really big so sign. It's Joe to throw first. Of game. what is happening in this game. The averages are irrelevant. One hundred. What's important is that Joe's had seven darts at a double and hit two. Anton's had eight and hit none. There are ways of calming your on-stage anxieties. One hundred. Just speaks to actors and... Breathing techniques. Yeah, that's, that's the best one. And everybody thinks it's about the inhale. It's not. It's about hey, the exhale. Yeah. The exhale slows the diaphragm and the heartbeat, and it allows you to just calm down. So the exhale has to be longer than the inhale. And 100. if you think about it in numbers, inhale for three, hold for two, exhale for seven. That's a pretty good number count for breathing to try 58. and maintain a bit of focus. Forty-five. It's a good start. Ninety-two. He's the one seventy. He's not playing anywhere near the level he was in round four yesterday. But he doesn't need to yet. One hundred. Do you require one hundred and seventy? I think he can sense it. So do I. I can see it. One hundred. <laughs> because he's got this game in hand. And his position in the table, he now knows that he's a sole survivor. One hundred. Definitely up to him. 70. Double top. Game that is really good, day. and it's 3-0. We Croft. said it had to be big. So far, it is. Yeah, this is big. The gap between them now in terms of leg difference well, is down to, to three ball. First. Game on. We have the benefit of a, a live league table, which tells us what is happening leg on leg. 57. If you think that Joe can't catch Anton, just press pause for a second. <laughs> Well, prior to the match starting, 100. it was plus 11 against plus 2. At 3 now, it's now plus 8 against plus 5. That's the benefit of playing the person you're trying to catch. 80. Because you deny them at the same time you benefit. That's why this system and format 81. is fascinating. And it's created so many different scenarios over the last few years. Well, tonight, when it comes to Group B, it's going to be exactly the same. 61. Five tonight, somehow. 100. Got to become three. It's not the same as the Spice Girls when they said two become one. It's going to be five become three. Wouldn't quite work. Nothing is 57. working here for Anton. No, nothing whatsoever. He's averaging 70. Wants to stay upstairs. 100. He is... The equivalent of three double tops away from a perfect result. 60. Shall we require He's got time on his side as well. And that's more than okay. Absolutely. You're on 120. You can return with three in hand, one double. Your opponent's not on a finish. 
93. Early risk-free darts. One left. Just has to shuffle. No score. And you just don't know how valuable this shot could be. Even if he was to still lose the match, just winning this leg might be vital. Antonio Raquan, 93. Eighteen's needed. And a bull. Game shot the wow. fourth leg. If Anton he Osmond. wins through to Saturday night by one leg in this group, it'll be because of that. So if it gets Joe to throw first. Joe at three clear at double ten. And just to bring you back to our live table. The live difference 100. in leg difference now is five. Could have been down to just two. 96. That was a classy shot. But another bit of proof about his combination shooting ability. Easy for me to say. 94. Seen in the past, people winning entire weeks by surviving early and then finding their best towards the end. Just think about 100. the very first game that Colin Osborne played in Champions Week. The one just gone. He didn't play well in his first game. He averaged in the 70s. But then he upped his level by about 30% in the next group game and he made his way to the final. Yeah, it was 68. A... Incredible performance, his second game, wasn't it? 100. He's taken that 93 check out on the chin. And it might just be a temporary reprieve for this man. 99. Who still can't Jericho get to a finish. A very similar situation to what we saw in the previous leg. Forty-seven. He's going to come back and should get two at tops as long as he hits the big 20. There's not going to be a whole heap 60. of pressure on it. Joey requires 60. Double top it is. 40. Oh, he's hit the flight twice. But surely... I mean, he just done 93. He can't do 120, can he? Five missed darts for the match. The draw. Three to win 4 0. Two to win 4 1. He's not going to hit the 120. 56. So it could be redemption for Joe on double Joe 10. 20. Game it is redemption on double 10. Joe and with a 4-1 victory, he now gets within two points of the Swede, who is not safe yet. And there are only three legs between them in the leg difference column. And considering what they've got coming up, it's going to be a really interesting last round of matches here in Group C. Don't go far. It's going to be Wazzy against Leighton Bennett to finish off round four. Hey, I'm Gary Ashburn, and I've been working in the world of collecting with the memorabilia for over 30 years. I'd love you to join me every Sunday night at 10 p.m. for Collectibles Guru, where we showcase awesome items from the world of sport, music, TV, and film. You'll hear the stories behind the genuine signatures and get a front row seat into the world of sport and showbiz. So tune in every Sunday night at 10 p.m. only here on Sporty Stuff TV.
from one end of the table, and we return to the foot of the table as David Wazuski takes on this young man, 17 year old Leighton Bennett, who has had a bit of a torrid time so far. This is the final match of the fourth cycle of games today, the ninth in total. Once this is completed, all the players will have one more to play. Um, first leg, it's David very, to throw first. very important one. Game Follows on. Follows this one as Anton's back in action against Ryan Harrington. 60. As it stands, Ryan Harrington has qualified. He's on 16 points. Anton's on 12. Joe Cross 140. on 10. If Anton loses to Ryan... 100. And then Joe Croft can get a big win against Leighton Bennett. He will take P2 in Group C 59. and take his place in tomorrow night's final. This is just an opportunity for Leighton to try and conjure 66. up a bit of confidence. One hundred. One hundred and five. Picks off the twenty five to leave one seventy. One hundred. David, you require one hundred and seventy. I think more than anything else, Miss, I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of 94. mannerisms we get from Leighton in his last couple of games. Whether he knows it or not, it's been a very 86. valuable week for him. David, it requires 76. I need to learn plenty about himself this week. I think we've learned a lot about him this week. Game shot in the first we've leg. The hard way David there in Wazuski. leg one. It's just a very much a rebuilding so process. First. He has gone through a incredible growth spurt. That, of course, changes everything. 60. The arms get longer. They're thrown in from a different angle. You're seeing the trebles and the doubles different. 125. Well, he's gone full pink flights now. That's one of the risks of that attack angle. If you... Under pitch it and you catch the flight first, all of the momentum is taken by the flight. Oh, we're getting it both ways now. I was just about to say, well, that can work the other way around and right on cue. And this is where the balance of the dart really comes in. It's something that certain players have nailed over the years. Someone like Terry Jenkins, for instance, who threw a dart quite flat. 85. But you didn't see him get many bounce outs because he had this uncanny knack of weighting his dart so well 44. that it, it would just find its way to sneak next to the, the other dart so easily. I don't remember Phil Taylor getting many bounce outs either, even though he was landing them very flat. Yeah, well, the, the dart one wasn't weeping. Yeah, the dart one wasn't weeping. As it entered the, the board, it was 40. Just, David, it just like 40. I say, it was, just like a plane coming into land. So there was there was no weep or wibble. 20. There was Basically nothing for to really clatter against. When you used to stand, well, you know this better than me. You stand behind Taylor and the dart's in the trouble. 20, you, you give it a look. 44. It doesn't look like there's anything 20. in there. Yeah, that's the only so thing, true. The only thing that's in there is the, the size of the point because the rest of the dart's out of the way. Indeed. And, yeah. and I saw that with no other player. It was genius. No score. Oh, it's missed on the right-hand side. I didn't think 56. it would miss it. In the gap between the barrels and the double. Double top for Leighton. Game shot in the second find leg. another Leighton leg. Bennett. So that is a first leg in... Well, he gets one leg in the first match. He got David one leg first. in his Game third on. match and one leg... In his fourth. So now his goal is to get two. 138. 
Yeah, just going back to that Phil Taylor thing, you're absolutely 100. right. One hundred. I remember standing behind him at the 2009 German Darts Championship at the Jerry Weber Center in Halle, and I'd played no, pretty well in that tournament to make the semi-finals, and he tore me apart like pulled pork. He shredded 40. me. And every time I'm behind, I'm thinking, what's he scored there? And the next thing you know, the referee says 140. And if somebody had 100. asked me to bet a lot of money on what he'd scored, I probably would have said 45. <laughs> yeah, we 40, didn't get a 40. read off the flights because they were the size of a penny black. You don't see many people using flights of that kind of size. It was a bit of a one-off thing, wasn't it? Twenty-five, Mr. Taylor. Well, it was a bit like when Target got the spent a fortune on this machine 46. to print the size flights he wanted, and I remember seeing yeah, Taylor the in leg. the players' David lounge Wazuski. with a pair of scissors chopping them up because they weren't small enough. Like, what are you doing? Four flag, it's latent. That's right. Engineer has designed this. Press to, to print these flights a 60. certain size and dimension. Yeah, those presses that they need to go inside that machine, they're not cheap. No. They're used to cut millions 55. of flights. Per day. <laughs> Have you seen those machines up close? Yeah. I think they're about 1.3 no, million T5. pounds. Yeah. I, I, when Red Dragon or Wimmore did a promotional video where they... Showed the technology behind it, I think. 56. It's like going to the chocolate factory if your name's yeah. Charlie. Because when you see flights rolling out. 59. And stems being yeah. spat out. You're like, oh, this is amazing. And then you get shown how a dart is, is grooved in the CNC 55. machines. And you think, this is just unbelievable. 119. Anybody would think we were darts nerds. <laughs> yeah, Lee at that factory is a genius. 100. This is a better leg, isn't it? Oh, he's just got 60 on the floor. That's the risk. Oh, he's got 120 20. on the floor. If he didn't have bad luck, he'd have none at all. Yeah, that was horrible. I can't ever remember seeing that happening. I've seen 180 on the floor. The Gary Anderson yeah. in the final against Taylor. But that's like two individual darts going from two deflections. Just be careful. It would have been so funny if he'd hit that. You require 170. This wouldn't be funny for Leighton. He missed it on the bull yesterday, 81. did was he? Like you require 48. Double 16. I think he wanted an 8 there. Game shot on the Doesn't fourth matter. leg. Leighton Bennett. It is a second leg of the contest. The first time he's got two legs to date yeah, in a game. Found a way through, didn't he? Fifth leg, it's David to throw first. Game on. He may even have a very large say in what happens 55. in this group because he's got Joe Croft in game 15. And we know that Joe is really hoping that Ryan Harrington will beat Anton in the game after this. In fact, the only game after this that 58. gives us a break from the top of the table clashes is Mindaugas Barauskas against David in game 14. Yeah, that's the, the middle match in in between the two key ones, with regards to who's going to take the second spot. Anton's still a massive favourite for that. 100. Well, maybe not massive, but big. Yeah, but how's he feeling after losing 4-1 to Joe? 171. Now, something's starting to happen here for Leighton. Averaging... 84 and change. 140. Lady Rock, 136. 96. With the use of downstairs would have been 46. The thought process. Lady Rock, 148. 
That one just veered to the right-hand side, didn't it? When he threw that, he might have thought it was good. 112, letting you require 90. Double 15. Yeah, I'm not really sure what was 60. going through his mind there. David McQueen, well, 36. That part of the board. He's had an absolute Game shot nightmare the fifth, down there. David, David was finds double 18 for 3 2. How do you think David's feeling about his last couple of days? Because he did start brilliantly yesterday, Six getting two wins in his first trooper. two games. It just hasn't materialised since then. No, he'd be, he'd be desperately disappointed. I don't know how much he wanted to qualify for 58. Saturday night and try and qualify for Champions Week. I had too many opportunities this series, or the last. 140. Have to get himself to some ADC stuff and try and qualify again. But even when David leaves us, we wish him all the very best with his endeavours for the next couple of months. Sure, we'll be playing a lot in the London area. And 140. Maybe even at the Challenge Tour at the end of October. 29. Oh, you're paying Leighton. 100. From certain players who have gone on to retire, and a lot of them say one of the reasons they chose that was because 59. what used David to be so easy became so difficult. Yeah, what felt so natural became alien. Oh, he's 81. gone for it. Well, there's a happy accident. Second time that's happened in the last few games where someone's gone for the ball and 140. Hit a 10. David this is 40. For Wazzy's first win of the day. 35. Later, you require 90. Another chance at 90. If he gets the 60, he knows exactly what he's got to do. Oh, he's got it. Oh, he's splitting it. And he didn't get a shot at a double. So make of that what you will. Personally, 74. I think it's a mistake. Same. you got to go for it. David, it requires five. Can't be defensive on odd number doubles. Not when you're 3-2 behind. Game he does lose by match. four legs to two. Was David he with his first Wazinski. win of the day? He's got a bit of a smile on his face, but I think Leighton Bennett could indeed learn from that situation on 90. You can't do that on double 15. You've got to attack it. 81-81 is not good enough to get the win on this one, but 86-05 is. Let's turn our attention to Anton Usland, now taking on Ryan Harrington in their last game in this group. Will it be a path for both of them to get through to Group A? Oh, sorry, through to Saturday night? Because we had Group A in the first three days, didn't we? Meet Rob's Grand Mary. She loves nothing more than a day at the seaside and an ice cream. And Rob, well, he wouldn't miss it for the world. By taking time outs on his account, he's making time for moments that really matter. Winner. Setting it up is simple. Choose from days to weeks at a time or customise it. When you play, play safe at Bet365.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we are four rounds down for the day. Before the break, we saw David Wazuski get the bit of Leighton Bennett by four legs to two. Elsewhere in the fourth round, Joe Cobb got the bit of Anton Oslin by four legs to one. And Ryan Harrington defeated for the first time by Mendelsus Borowskis, a 4-2 victory there for the Lithuanian. Right, final game of the group time. But before we do that, let's have a look at the table because Ryan Harrington, we know his passage has been safe for a little while now on 16 points. Anton Osden can confirm his place into the finale with victory here against Harrington. And if it is a win for Harrington, it's going to be a waiting game for the Swede to see whether Joe Croft can sneak through. Right, next up for us then, it is the Battle of England and Sweden as Anton Oslund takes on Ryan Harrington. Watching this one in the cover day box, it's Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson. It's time to find out who will join Ryan and Connor in Saturday night. It's not a case of Anton winning a first certain leg, amount Anton of legs. To throw first. Game on. Because if he was to lose 4-3, He'd actually make it easier for Joe to catch him in game 15. The only way he gets through to Saturday no, via this three. game is to win against Harrington. That is what he needs to do. Yeah, because I think, I think Croft beats Bennett. So 44. he will join him on 12 points. It's all about well, just winning. It's, it takes everything out of the equation. One thing's got to change, and that's the productivity of Ursland in this game because it wasn't there against Joe Croft. No, just an off game, and maybe the occasion got to him a bit, but this is a, a new game and a, a fresh start and a fresh mind. And when you know it's your last game, you can give it everything you've got. Yeah, and these two, this, these two went to the wire, didn't no, they? This game nine. yesterday. And so they're like 167. Yeah, it's another one of those games that you think, well, how did Ryan win that? Yeah, because it was a host of missed doubles in the match. In fact, there was, oh no, this one actually was a decent finishing display. It was the one prior to that with a host of missed doubles. Anton's in a good spot here, though. 58. And Zonia require 108. Ryan's not protecting that undefeated record now because he has lost to Mendelgas Barauskas quite recently. No, so the pressure of that is no longer there. Yep. Or will the intensity be there? 40. And he wants to go 16. through the card. He's a bit peeved at the minute Game because the first leg. he has lost the and first so leg and he did not perform particularly brilliantly in that first leg at all. So Anton, who has the darts in this Second contest, first. has completed Game his first mission and quite well in 16 darts. Tidy hold. Back comes Ryan. 180. I'd classify that as tidy. Eighty-three. After that opening dart, I thought he was going to back him up with one. Oh, just for a second there, we were Ooh, pinning our hopes on dart five hitting. The rest of them have. Like I said, this is a game 44. where the margin of victory doesn't matter. But when it comes to Croft against Bennett. The margin of victory does. 50. Yeah. And more so because if Usland was to lose by distance, say 4-1-4-2, it would make it a little bit easier for Joe. Fifty-six. I think it's a good thing for Joe, that this game is happening with a game in between. Yeah, he's got a chance to analyse it, hasn't he? And indeed. Look at 41. the situation to see exactly what he will need to do. A lovely first start from Ryan. 74. 
19's first here for Anton, surely. Two singles. Would have left a shot at 25 to leave a finish. And then he was thinking 20. for 1-3-3 three, three to leave the two data, but it doesn't happen. Another rejection. Game shot in the second Which leg. ultimately Ryan didn't Harrington. make any difference. Harrington does take it with a 16 data of his own. Third leg, it's Anton to throw first. Game on. One hundred. Don't forget that we do have Group B action tonight from 10 p.m. We're going to start with Reese Griffin against Owen Bates, 55. which was a corker <laughs> of a game yeah, in the early was, hours. That was a beauty. Won in the end by Reese with a... A one four nine checkout. Eighty five. With with Owen waiting on a double. Yeah, Bates still in a very strong position, like Reese. You got Harry Gregory on 45. four points. You got Benjamin Drewus from Denmark on four points. Gulliver on zero points, but still in with a Small hole. One hundred. Yeah, mathematical chance. Probably needs one of the players on four points to have a pointless night, and then for somebody else to slow down. One hundred thirty-four. That leg difference for Trina does not bode well at minus eleven. No, she needs 58. the top two to absolutely obliterate everybody else, and her win four stroke five from five. Uh, sorry, four from four. 135. Anton, you have a 158. Two trouble 20s. And double 19. There is other options, of course. None of which I would recommend. <laughs> yeah, 254s for bull. 57, 58. 51 bull. Right, number 132. That's a solid 25. Well, it's not in the way of the ball, is it? 60. And so you require 100. If you want to be part of day six, shots like this will come in handy. Tops, tops. Very safe 60. tops, that. Running requires 72. Almost looked like a very safe single. It's like he was giving Ryan an opportunity. Game an opportunity he takes. Ryan Harrington. More bad news. It's a break of throw. The gap now well, in legs it's between Ryan to throw first. Anton Game and on. Joe. It's just two. Same amount of points that separate them. 46. I know what Joe's thinking right now. Ryan wins the last two legs. Leg difference is exactly the same. Yeah, any win for Joe. And he joins Ryan. Nine, One thing we must tell you as well is that legs won, which is the tertiary factor of separating the players in the table. Anton has currently got 32. 140. Joe's got 28. If Anton does not win another leg in this contest... 99. And Joe goes on to win four legs, they will have the same in that particular category. But he would be way ahead in leg difference. Indeed. But it reminds me of what happened in Group A last week, where West... 58. And Wesley Harms... But on the same points, the same leg difference, the same legs won, they were separated in the Group A table by average. 99. <laughs> I haven't seen that before. Nope. I've seen it go to legs one, and it'd be just the one in it. One hundred. Superb 140 there from Anton. 128. That was his second of the contest. Ryan's only got the one. Has he got the ball? 103. Right on line. And so you require 106. Just come up short. Trouble 
Trouble had 18. Would have left double 16. 86. 25 for Ryan required, to extend 25. his lead to 3 1. Seventeen. Not to be. When Anton had 68 left, he chose to go treble 16 to leave double 10. No that score. plan hasn't worked. Ryan, it require eight. Double four, and the leg difference will change again. Ooh. Four. I was just about to say, how does he get past that dot? And he did require didn't. 20. He got about as close as he could have. And that double 10 will be a little Anton bit of comfort Oscar. to Anton. Now the difference between himself and Joe Croft. Fifth leg, it's and the leg Anton difference is three. First. Game on. In the background, Ryan is seething. Yeah, he's got a 100. face like he's... And a pound, and then realised he'd lost a tenner early on that day. One hundred and forty. Sometimes you can channel that kind of emotion in the best possible way, and you feel sorry for the treble twenty at times like this. One hundred and thirty-one. Just wonder if that double ten being hit has just given a little sigh of relief to everything in Anton's armory. Because it feels 84. like he's been under pressure for a quite a long time today. Yeah. You wouldn't know it, though, by the body language. 100. Fifty-nine. Anton, you're one hundred and six starts from one hundred and seventy. He shouldn't go for it. But he did. We know he does. Can't help himself. He's determined to get more on that bingo card of his. <laughs> 58. It's just who he is. It's what we've learned from Ursuline this week. He sees a shot, he goes for a shot. And he's yeah, he got a shot the there. Leg. He is now within and one so leg Osland. of joining Harrington on Saturday night. Yep, wins this so leg. It's Ryan to throw it's first. Job done. Or the next leg, of course. One hundred. Will there be something else to talk about at the end of the day? One hundred and forty. Maybe Ursland's the kind of player that if he was to make Saturday, he would turn into a different beast in a knockout scenario. It's not quite knockout from the start, of course. One you haven't tuned into Saturday night already. Off, though, is it? <laughs> You've got two games in your respective group on Saturday night. You win them both. You win your group. 43. But it's the top two of three people that go through to the semis where it is knockout. And, of course, the final stipulates who wins the week. Yeah, you don't win your opening game. You can 85. put yourself in a world of trouble. I saw that from Willie Boland last week, who was... Put in a group with Conan Whitehead and Steve West. Talk about being thrown to the wolves. 180. Oh, boy, how good was that? A first 180 of the game for him. Oh, what a response. 140. Max and with left double 18. He's got one of these this week. Has he got another? One hundred and thirty. Tell you what, he's really close to 76. busting that. Is that a factor? Now it's a factor because if he'd hit double fourteen, he was coming back for one three eight. Now he has three in hand for a place in 
tomorrow night's final. Antonio Alongside Rakuan, the man, four. he's about to beat if he can find double two. He's through. Game shot and he knows it. Anton Osler. They both know they're going to be in Saturday night. And for Joe Croft, it is despair. Because when he plays Leighton Bennett in game 15, he was hoping he was going to have a chance to bridge the gap. But unfortunately, Anton has done too much in the group. And he now has a four-point cushion from second to third. Ryan Harrington wins the group. And in second position, Anton Osland. Final straight. Your horse is challenging for the lead. Victory is so close you can taste it. This magnificent animal giving everything for his jockey. And in the last stride, your horse is beaten. Fortunately, with Coral, you'll get a free bet up to £10 if your horse finishes within a length of the winner. Available every day of the season. Coral. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. And we're joined here on the balcony by a very happy and a very relieved Anton Oslin. Anton, many congratulations on your debut into Saturday night. Just sum up how you feel. Now I feel very exhausted, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I feel uh, very happy as well, of course. But it, it, it's been so hard, actually. Mm -hmm. Been so hard. Has it been harder than perhaps you may have expected to be on Monday morning playing here at the Super Series and everything that obviously comes with playing in this environment? Not actually, but it's been very hard. The Group A was very tight as well, so there were very good players in the Group A as well, so, but, but the Group C has been tough as well, so very good. Was there enough for you, the way you played in Group A, to feel like coming into this new group, coming into Group C, there's plenty to be confident about and you could put yourself in the position that you're in now? <sighs> Fairly not, actually. I didn't. I know I can be much better than I was playing in the Group A, of course. But but I went home to my hotel and watched the games again. And I was listening to uh, Paul and Mason, and uh, they gave me some couple of great words. So thankful, thankfully for that. See, our pundits know exactly <laughs> what they are talking about. So into tomorrow night now, then. What do you, how do you feel? What are you thinking going into that occasion? To be honest, uh, going to Saturday, that was my goal. So now I've reached my goal. Hopefully I will play some darts. Just play some darts. We're definitely going to be playing darts. Now, no Scandinavian player has ever won on a Saturday night at the Super <laughs> Series. How much would you like to be the first to do exactly that? Of course I want to win it. Of course. I hate losing, but uh, I'll try my best. And, you know, I'll tell you what we've loved about you this week, Anton, is you've always played with a smile on your face. You've absolutely <laughs> loved this, haven't you? I've loved it for sure. It's a really great, great venue, to be honest. It's probably the best I've been to. Well, hopefully that smile stays tomorrow night. Anton, many congratulations. It's been a pleasure watching you this week. We'll see you again tomorrow night. A couple more games for us to go then on this Friday afternoon. Mindauskas Baraskas against David Wazuski is coming up next and it is going to be watched by Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson. Thank you, Henry. Yep, a couple more games to bring you. And these boys are just playing for pride. And try and put down a, a bit of a marker to ensure a return, Nico. Yeah, I think these guys would love to come back. It has been a very interesting couple of days for David, but 
It's been a full week of ups and downs for Mindaugas. Looks like it's Mindaugas to try first. Game on. You can almost tell on his face that he's enjoyed every single moment of it. And you can almost tell as well that he's quite sad that it's coming to an end. I wasn't. <laughs> I just wanted my pit. I think we saw from Anton there yeah, just was... how grueling five well, days can be. Um, maybe for him it's been more the, the mental because of that group A where they, it was so tight and so tight at the top to then, well, it was his last game, potentially his last game of the week and it was a match he has, had to win. So the relief was there. No doubt you'll sleep like a baby tonight. He's going to need it because he's going to have to go through it all again on Saturday night. You reckon 126. I always felt like it, it wasn't job done, but 58. it was mission accomplished just to get yourself in the mix of Saturday night. And then it just is what it is. You turn 100, up, you prepare. Because you require 68. And you try and get it done. 15 ball. Yeah, that's inexperience. You could see... 28. They would require 36. Why, why, why? <laughs> 27. Maybe he knew he was coming back. 40. But when you got 65 and two darts, you have to go 15. Day. I know he's Mindigas gotten away with it there, and he's probably not learnt from that situation. No, because he's got away with it. But like most of the players, they watch it back. Second against David to throw first. If you're ever unsure, the referee is not there just to call out the score's hit. Whoa! He will also tell Back in my day, you would say, check. 11. And they would tell you what scored. You go, check, check. And they would tell you what's left. It was standard procedure back in the day. Whoa, oh, hang on a minute. 180. He did give us our best average of Group C and indeed the week in his final 81. game David on Thursday. 141. What's he giving us here? One hundred. Was he was trying to make us feel all fuzzy? And they usually come like that, don't they? Out of the blue. Yeah, but he required forty-one. Yeah, but like that shirt of his. Double eight. Twenty-five. It hasn't been a very good afternoon for Darius Labanos because he was beaten on the European 16. tour, and. And Douglas has been eliminated as well. Game shot in the second leg. He has lost that David leg. David Wazowski. So no good news until maybe leg three. David averaging 102.72 after to two legs. First. Ten points more than his opponent. What he needs to do is start the day the way he finishes it. 180. He might get a barrage of 180s in this game at this rate. Leg three and we've already got three. 85. Forty-five. David won this tie yesterday. Or two. It was another one of those with a, a lot 60. of missed doubles. Twenty in total. We saw that quite a lot in Group B last night and into the early hours. One hundred and forty. But you sense that probably won't happen tonight because people will feel more comfortable. Yeah, it's been a it's been a theme of the week. As we get another match. 180 match, minutes, 436. As we get to the end of the third leg. Keep this pace up, lads. We'll have a record. 60. 60. Might even be an individual record. 100. Seven is the record. 76. For one person to get 180s in a match. Double top. 36. Same equation. It requires 76. Or was he? 36. Same result. Minigus should require 40. 
Oh, how does he find it from that? Yeah, he That's how. Third leg. He pushes the wire down, effectively makes the double look a little smaller, but it didn't make any difference. Fourth leg, it's David to throw first. Ninety-two. It's easy for me to say that I could never play with flights that are that pink, but I once played a World Championship match hey, and indeed what? a Grand Slam match with a shirt that pink. Scott Mitchell likes a bit of pink. One hundred. Keegan Brown likes a bit of pink. Yeah. So much so that Keegan actually has a pink fridge, a pink toaster, and a pink kettle. Eighty-three. Also, has been to see the Barbie movie. Then. Are you trying to tell me that he hasn't been to see Oppenheimer? One hundred and forty. Is there enough time in the day for that? It's on for a long time, isn't it? Yeah. Ninety-five. I have to get myself on another long haul flight to watch that one. Yeah, that's definitely one of those for a for a long haul. Ninety nine. Preferably with a bit of leg room. I just wonder what the plans are for Mindy over the next few weeks. Seven. David gives us the 70. sign for a field goal right there. My score is a grand total of seven. No, oh, and that's too many. All going off. Adrenaline can have such an impact on the way you play 47. the game. 47. Again, more an experience there, 70. really. Thirty-six. Well, effectively, what he's got in two visits is thirty-six points. Prior to that, he, he, well, he's, he's taken over 10 points off his average in this 80. back end of the lag. That's a David bit of a sign, that third dot, because previously in the week, he hit a treble 20 with a deflection like that. No score. gave him probably the best one of the week. 108. Can you imagine if he loses this lag. Oh, no. Double 16. Game Ouch. shot in the fourth leg. Mendigus Borowskis. It's a bit like finding a nettle in your socks. <laughs> that one isn't nice. Fifth leg, it's he scored 36 points in three visits and was lumbered on double 17. 140. Before this match began, Borowskis was on eight points. Pervazuski was also on eight points. So this is a playoff to see who finishes no, on 10. Two. And in fourth position. I know it is of no consequence, but it's just Whoa, something that you'll tell yeah, you people finished. back home. Where did you finish? I oh, finished in fourth, not fifth. Potentially. 128. Could be, could be third. If Lane beats Joe. Indeedy. 137. No idea why I used that word. Bronze medal. It's not even a word. <laughs> well, Mindy wants to go out with a nice sing hey, song on four tops for a 44. bit of Motown. And he Game wins it by four legs to match. one. That's a really Mindy good performance from Mindaugas Barauskas. He's been great fun to watch this week. 92.3 and 67% on his doubles for the entire week. As he, in a somewhat gentlemanly like uh, manner, says thank you to the referee. I like that. That's a classy touch. But if he'd been doubling like that all week, he would have won a lot more games. Let's put it that way. It's been great to have David back as well. As he averages over 90 in his final game of week five. Now we turn our attention to the very final game where we will say goodbye to Joe Croft and Leighton Bennett. Catch the best thoroughbred racing from South Africa alongside 15 live Greyhound races at 11 o'clock every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday morning live here on Sporty Stuff TV.
Well, this is our final match of the Group C, and it is Leighton Bennett against Joe Croft. Leighton Bennett, well, without a win so far, and we'd love to see him sign off with a win. But a chance for Joe Croft, who currently sits in fourth position on 10 points plus five. Baruskas on 10 points plus five, but has a superior legs one column of 31 to Joe's 28. Been a tough old group for these guys, but been impressed with Croft. Has first to be said. It's late into yeah. first. I have to Game agree. On. First time in this environment, Nico. Got to start somewhere. And as far as starts go, forty a lot worse. But I think the ingredients are there Same. for him to really progress. Now, I know that he's been playing a lot no, of ABC I dots. Four. That's how he got here. Keep doing it. Yeah, it's working. It's the perfect formula in, in preparation as you sort hey, of build want... momentum. But there's three players that that we picked out this week, and all three of them have something in common, Nico. 100. Beautiful fundamentals. Reese, Anton, and Joe Croft. 96. Wasn't it us that said that Rod and... Sorry, not Rod. Uh, I'm getting carried away with myself. Ryan 97. and Anton would be our two favourites in the group. Yes. Wasn't it us that said it, that? It was incredible. Well, a broken clock's one hundred twice a day, I'm sure someone will say. We'll probably get it all wrong tonight then. Oh, I think we've pretty much called the top three for tonight as well. 139. Pretty sure we called Connor Heenan in 99. group A, we but we were a bit we did. fortuitous. Bennett has got himself in 44. charge of leg one. And you require 40. Game shot that the is first better. leg. Leighton Bennett. And I think his biggest motivation here is to end on a win to make sure that he doesn't finish the group Second, like without to points first. at all. Yeah. No one wants to see that happen. 94. I wonder what Joe is feeling right now because he was probably quite hopeful that the table topper would do him a favour. 180! <laughs> He's got a personality, this young man. I'll give him that. He has. He has done exhibitions 60. in the past at a very young age, and you've got to have a personality to do those things. Have you seen enough evidence from this 100. methodology for it to continue? I think that's the big question hanging in the air. Yeah, I think that is a... Uh, not for me. 60. I think anything that isn't natural and is a little bit too manufactured, I think 43. makes it too difficult to continue to replicate. I think it'll work sometimes and then break down in others. Where 100. If you have a throw that's very natural to you, it's something that is instinctive. 100. Sometimes you do find that dart players do things that are quite fashionable, whether it's trying something that like you see 70. somebody else having success with. Is that something to do with this? Because we've seen people changing 92. from well, upright trajectories to flat trajectories. I think they're, they're done in certain situations and circumstances, like on 80 and 60. 67. Then I think Lane there's a case for 20. it. But we did see Luke Littler here, when he was safe in a group, he went to a, a different angle of attack with a different set of darts. And that, indeed, there were his Game dad's darts. And his dad's Nathan shirt. Bennett. <laughs> well, he was just showing off then. And Bennett is starting to show off like it's something a little bit reversed. better here with 217 darters for a 2 0 lead. 45. I think, with, I think the Gurney Bates approach is the one I favour. That you have that ability to do it in your locker, but fifty-four you necessarily want to. I mean, the proof is, although he did some amazing things, Luke Littler when 55. he did sort of change up, ultimately he's nowhere near as efficient with his standard setup and throw. 
I think he knows that too. 100. Yeah. Oh, did you hear that Mark Williams' queue turned up? Oh, superb. Four 60. days too late. Oh. Oh, dear. Yeah, there you go. That's expensive. The life of a travelling sports person. 180. Second max for Bennett. Down to 122. 122 points away from 3 0. I mean, he was a 58. Big price. And you were going 122. Before the off today, he was 2 to 1. I'm sure that would have drifted after the day he's had. 40. And that's a, there's a perfect example. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't because it's not natural. Yeah, different parts of the board need attention as well as the treble 20. 100. Like you when you change 82. something like this, you tend to focus your attention on that. 60 bed a little bit too much and you have to give the other parts of the board 42. a little bit of attention as well. 128. That's what comes with practice. When you have those long practice sessions, double ten. 118. Well, this is 40. Three nil lead. Double ten. That no was the score. fear with that last Three start. It's been 10. happening way too often this week. It's a confidence thing, isn't it? Game shot. Believing in the action. Joe Croft. Which you have to do. Seems like an awfully long time ago since this well, was the first Joe game of the to group. First. Croft averaging 87, of course. I think a lot of people will be saying Gordon Bennett if Leighton wins this game. Because based on form, you would have. You would think that Joe would get the win. But he has been gradually 55. chipping away all day. One leg in his first game. I know he got nilled by Borowskis in game five. 55. In fact, that is the only game that will be a nil scoreline in this group today. One hundred and forty. Averaging 81 against Wazzy in game 12. And he's up around that kind of number here. 81 and a half. 96. 136. He's got a big out this week. Yeah. 161. He might even better it. 40. Then you require 170. Well, he doesn't get it. Joe might. Ninety-six. Do you require one hundred and seventy? Sixty. Then you require seventy-four. Re-establish that two-leg cushion. Double twelve. Sixty-two. Do you require one hundred and ten? Very grateful that he didn't have a shot at the bull. Yep. One ten for a level game. There's the sixty. Double sixteen. 78. Ladies and right hand side 12. of the board has seen a lot of ups and downs for Leighton. But the bottom of the board, the that's player. probably the best Leighton start Bennett. he's thrown at the bottom of the board all week. And I think he knows it. He's had if real like trials Leighton on double 15 first. and double 2, double 3. 45. At the first time of asking this time, he finds the basement double. 60. Sometimes it's very hard to read dark players, but in that instance, it was very easy to read Leighton. Whatever he goes on to do in the next few months, we wish him the best. And same goes for Joe. Just 100. a reminder that he's won his last four vault events in ADC darts in the southeast of England, or the eastern part of London. He can maintain a winning record 43. in his local tournaments like that. An invite back here is guaranteed. And it's your best route to get here 44. yourself. Get involved with Amateur Dart Circuit online. Get yourself to some vault events. And you might just find your way onto this stage. 100. Lenny, you're 132. This is for his first two points in the group. 
He was no, the first person too. yesterday to have an entire day without a win. He's one dart away from making sure that that does not happen on Friday. 140. Lady McGuire, 40. Go and he does end with a win. Match. He ends with Lighten a smile. Bennett. Joe Croft is eliminated because he wasn't able to get in touch with Anton Ursulin in second position. But Boom Boom does give us something to smile about towards the end. He wins by four legs to one. That was a very decent performance. One of his best of the week, in fact. And when you consider the pressure that was put on himself by himself to get that win with his last game in Group C, I think he stood up to it very well. All the very best, guys. We'll see you again very soon. But right now, let's go to the balcony to see what happened in Group C with Chris and Henry. Thank you very much, Paul. Nice to see Leighton finishing with a win and a smile on his face. Yeah, we never want to see a player go away uh, pointless and bageled all day. It was, it was good to see him just get up a win, like you say, and just have a smile on his face. And a, a fairly decent performance there, but a, a chance to, to go away, reflect, watch a lot of it back. Uh, and just sort of rebuild his, his career. A massively talented young man, only 17 years of age. We're going to see plenty more of him here. Most certainly that will be the case. Right, let's see what we have seen today then by having a look at the results. 15 matches coming and a going. And well, quite early on in the piece, did we confirm the plate of Ryan Harrington through to the finals? In fact, we did it before we even joined our friends at Sporty Stuff TV at three o'clock. He was quite simply dominant. Yeah, I mean, I, he was solid all the way through and actually started to play better when he started uh, to, to drop a few games. But the big game there was, was the 4-2 win for Anton against Ryan and then it took it out of the hands uh, of Joe. But great performance as well from Joe on debut. David will be a little bit disappointed. I haven't had too many opportunities of late and for me probably tried a little bit too hard to, to ensure a return, but I, I'm sure he'll get one. Most certainly. Right, let's see how Ryan then made it through earlier on this afternoon then. Started off with a 4-1 victory against Leighton Bennett. And at this point, you just felt it was just about confirming it from there. Yeah, and again, uh, uh, James Wade's a very reactive player and will pretty much play what's in front of him. And Ryan Arrington's been very much like that throughout. If, as soon as someone's up their game, he's, he's, he's tried to go with them. And I think we'll see a, a much different player tomorrow night. He'll be much more switched on. Damage was done yesterday. One five out of five today. It was just about coasting over the line. As uh, so Anton Arsenal, he made his way through. Look, we had a little bit of a joke about it up here on the balcony, but the fact that he's going back, he's watching the games, he's listening to what other people say in a constructive way as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's good to see that he's using that. And it kind of, it, you saw it as the week went along. Yeah, I think it was something me and Nico picked, on very, picked up on very early. The, the throw is just absolutely beautiful. There's no surprise when he does things like that because he's going to give himself opportunities. It's silky smooth. Um, some bit of board management, plenty of, plenty of work to do there, that's for sure. Uh, but ultimately, he was a player that, that stood out, as did Rhys Griffiths, because there's another guy with, a, with an absolutely stunning throw. With the Super Series, the joy about it is that we can watch players develop and evolve in front of our eyes. Is he the type of player that you'd like to see here, get a couple more experiences and see how he develops and see how far his game can actually go? Yeah, I think we, we know the scenario about the players get two opportunities per series, one for a whole week and then the other for a, a Group B or Group C. For someone like him, if he doesn't go through tomorrow night, it's a little bit of a, a big ask to come all the way over from Sweden just to play in two days. But he's certainly a player that I think, if he doesn't go through to tomorrow, go through tomorrow night for Champions Week, I'd certainly love to see back for a whole week just to see, because that'll give him another six, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks to again grow a little bit more. Well, let's see how everything finished up then in Group C. This is the table following the end of proceedings. Ryan Harrington, the victor, 16 points to his name. Anton Oslo getting through on 14. Mendelskis Borowskis in the end taking third spot on 10 points. The Lithuanian Joe Croft also on 10. So that is how the table finished up. And so we are now at the halfway point as far as the tournament bracket is concerned. And this is how things break down. We knew Conor Heenahan was going to be making his way through to the final on Wednesday afternoon, joined by Ryan Harrington joined by Anton Oslun and the big question now is who's going to join them three in Group B tonight? Yeah, the three at the top of the list there in that Group B underneath it. Uh, in what order? I don't know. I presume, well, I suspect Owen will will come out tonight far and early, get some damage done, but it's a big opening game himself and Reese Griffiths in the opening match at 10 o'clock tonight. So really looking forward to that one. 
but they're, the, they're my three that would join the other three. Well, let's get some confirmation of that Group B table ahead of tonight's finale. Griffin and Bates both on six. Drurus and Gregory both on four. As for Trina, didn't really happen for her last night. Zero points to her name. So it'll be interesting to see how that pans out this evening. Well, it's been a brilliant day of darts, hasn't it, Mace? Yeah, and it's only halfway through. Indeed, I shall see you 10 o'clock sharp. You will. Right, I hope we can see you 10 o'clock sharp as well on Sporty Stuff TV and on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel for all of the action. But as far as Group C is concerned, well, it was Harrington who's top of the pile. Where have we heard that before? We'll see you at 10. wonderful week it's been here in Portsmouth to sit here Monday morning 9 30 as the first dart is thrown to the conclusion right now I was asked last night which two will not get out of the group I said Alex Small and Adam Warner the final tonight it's Alex Small versus Adam Warner my predictions have been absolutely useless hashtag don't follow the dozer and I also feel robbed over that last video I was told to be boring. I just looked like a clown. Okay, first leg it's Adam. And speaking of clowns. Matthew Edgar. Game on. The last game of 2022. It's the final of week eight. Alex Small, Adam Warner. Adam Warner winning the darts. This is the only game of the week that has a bull up. Adam winning that ball up in the practice room. Both these players very impressive 59. in their semi-finals. And that is the sign of a good player. When the chips are down, when the stakes are raising, can you raise and bring out an even better version of yourself? Both of these achieved that and then some in their semi-final performances. 97. He's got ice through his veins, this guy, because my concern was he was on such a high... 11, 12 minutes ago. 100. You've got to go backstage and then actually go back on. You know, for Alec, he's had 20 minutes to sort of just understand what the position he's in and, and sort of prepare himself ready. You know, Adam had all his crowd grabbing hold of him. He nearly fell off the stage. And I expect it to come out really slowly. But after nine darts, he wants one, two, four. 128. Full of talent. I think Adam, we can say now, at the point where we've got to stop questioning him. I think he's answered everything we need answering. He's shown every bit of quality that needs showing. And Go just to continues to do so. 106. 160 for the match in the semi-finals. And then it is a 124 finish. Alex to throw a 12 first. dart leg. This is from the man who apparently was 40 to 60. 1 at the start. It's not apparently, he, is, he was 40 to 1. He was the 40 to 1, the biggest outs. He was 25 to 1 just to win his group. So I guess my job as a pundit, as a, a player who's been on the stage, 100. he will be walking on air right now. And the time of Christmas, I can't get that song out of my head as I say that, but he will be feeling an absolute million dollars. The battle he has right now, it's just the, um, the uh, controlling the emotions that, uh, in his body right now. Not to think of the winning line. And every time I begin to doubt him, he bangs a 140. And he's unbelievable. Really, really, imp really impressed with both of these. 43. We're focusing on Adam because he's the one who's tearing away with this one in the early phases. But both of these players, mightily impressive. But Adam's just not stopping. 
130. <laughs> He's getting better. Incredible. Adam Warner. 98. We have a Adam new fan. 131. You can see this out. This is seriously impressive stuff. We can still do this. 51. I think it require 160. Interesting enough, the 160 is what changed the knife for Adam Warner. 128. What a setup there. Let me require 80. Just keep the first dart straight. A fat 20 is not the end of the world. Sit on top of that. Take your chance. 60. Oof. Alex second there, I thought 32. that was in. We haven't mentioned much of Alex Small. Game is over. And it's 1-1. One, one. Alex Small. One thing I can mention about Alex Small is he's not missing doubles. He was four from five in game six when he took on Richard Beenstra. He was four from so five in his fourth three first. victory in the semi-final against Chris Landman. And he's one from one here. Alex Small is not a man who is wilting under the pressure. But then again, 100. Same can be said about Adam. This is going to be a quality, quality final. 84. I'm Indeed. sure that family on the front right, I'm sure they're here every week. It was nice to see Luke Getty here tonight. So, Luke, 100. It's great that you've stayed around. I know you live locally, but just being here. That meant an awful lot to me that to see you here we'll be seeing you back at the motor super series i'm sure and there he is bottom left hand corner there you'd be thinking if only that was me it's so cool i'm talking to my super league team uh as we you know as we do the commentary here and 83 they were predicting chris landman at one point tonight and it's swayed and you know they know adam really well that's where i got my classic information of what do you know about him? Well, he wears chinos, and that's all I had to go on him. The creamy dream. And I thought tonight was going to be a nightmare. 29. Far from it. But Alex Small, very, very proud of them amazing flights he uses there. I mean, we're going 154. Just continue to do, and he might not like the pace. That's the only thing I'm thinking of there. Another one leaves tops. And that leaves 78. So if you're looking at the 18 bed, and once again, he's keeping it simple. That's what I like about him. He's not drifting into four of the one because you're putting too much pressure on that treble. But 60. Alex looks second best a lot in this game. And you can tell that with the averages. Adam, he requires 60. But he's right in this. I'm impressed with Alex. I had concerns last time I saw him. He was just a little bit too raw. Our champion of champions has put on an unbelievable performance this week. And it's positive after positive. It's double ten. Fifty. And they're the kind of moments Alec, that Alex Small will be saying. Thank you very much. I'll take this. Sixty. Never the easiest double Adam, is double five. Ten. And I think that face there was thinking two double four. But at this stage, I think he'd be thinking straight for it. Not a feeling. Adam and his response is my information I had. He's quiet, softly spoken. And I was getting messages. No, on, not on well, your Nelly, is he? To throw first. Get him to do the Warner shuffle. He'll shout. He'll scream. I'm just my mind pitching at a varsity match now with other university guys. I've been there. I've done exhibitions at the Nottingham one. And the crowd go crazy. And he's feeding off that. But the most impressive thing about him right now is that it's not affecting him when he gets on that hockey. He is consistent. He's steady. 95. He's impressive. Alex Small, now it's your turn, young man. Yeah, both these players 61. have had success away from the Super Series. Glenn just mentioned there about Alec winning that Champion of Champions. And we bring that up a lot because I think that's a big title. I think it's one of the biggest ones outside of the PDC circuit. Adam Warner winning a Ryder's UK Open qualifier. He won that one in Liverpool, which got him through to the UK Open, which Nine, is a TV major on the PDC side. 
that experience might come in quite handy here for this one when it's one of those one-off matches. Certainly the final of that, when you've played all day, like he's been here Nine, all week. He too. That Riley's qualifier will go for about 14 hours. And when you get to that one match where if you win, you're through. If you don't, it's 40. like it never existed. He's something for you, Matt. Them two days he had off, he's coming here really fresh, really strong. I'm saying that Richard Veen should look really tired tonight. And we had that conversation. Is it good to continue playing for the week? Um, it'd be interesting what Adam did no, for a couple of days. Too, did he just relax? I mean, he's a fit, healthy young lad. He could play darts for a month and it wouldn't affect him. But for no, Alec, that last half four. for Alec there just keeps him Adam, in this leg. 122. He's beginning to run away with it there, Adam. And how many times have we said that this week? So treble 18. He'll stay there. And once again, he'll stay there. 54. I think we're going 124. It's not, it's not a gimme, 68. So this 124 doesn't have all the pressure on in the world, but he'll stay there. 56. They're just not getting them trebles now. Now it's about this type of finish. And, and if you've you been with us all 68. week, you'll know the importance what we're talking about. These are the kind of finishes that professional players practice. They're on 64, 68, 72. Them type of finishes will happen four to five times in a match. Game four to five times, Adam Warner continues to impress. The guy is superb. The guy is impressive. You're brilliant, Warner, someone shouts. That's the kind of help the crowd can give you. Advantage, Warner. Game on. He's a leg away. A leg away from the title. A leg away from Champions Week. A leg away from £5,000 in prize money. I said these are the legs. This is the leg when the heart starts to pound. You can see the finishing line. Not affecting the performance. But this is where we're seeing Alec no, really kick five. in in times when his back was against the wall. He's produced some amazing darts. But when you have a look at the averages, there's a 15-point gap between the two at the moment. And unless that turns around quite 45. drastically... You've got to say that Adam should be able to serve this out and pick up his Four biggest five. prize check of his life so far. And I say so far because I strongly expect that with darts like what we're seeing from him, he's going to be picking up many more checks in the next couple of years. 58. No treble in six there, though. Was the damage done in the early stage? 134. For the first time, 70 a bit of nerves here for Adam. There's nerves on both parties, I think. It's all getting a bit edgy now, and I'm not surprised. Neither of these, well, I say neither of them. Alex picked up a check for £10,000. You won the champion of champions. What are you on about, Edgar? The Warner and big gulps of breath. I like big pieces of gold dust. Hey, it just T5. helps to control that adrenaline, which will be flowing through his body right now. The only good thing for him is, is Alex game just dip, but that Adam last dart by Alex Small there could be decisive. Leaves a two darter. And who is going to write off Adam Warner with this treble 18? And for the title, 89. I like you require one. See his followers, all eyes glued to the board, hands on heads. They might have to wait a bit longer. Alex Small's doubling, as we've already suggested, has been phenomenal. No, this is it. Three darts in hand. This is what you dream of on a Monday morning when you walk into here in Group A. Adam, you dream of 16. this position that Adam Warner is about to go and play in. The process hasn't changed. Look at the people in the back. That they, it, that's harder than the dart player. Double eight. What a dar for this young man. 12. 
Alec, you're required 10. He does have a bit of breathing room on the scoreboard. Game's your but he's going to have to go back Alec to Smoke. 501 points and start all over again. Creamy dream. Sigflick is Alec to Has throw he just hit this first nightmare. The positivity in you will think, and I've had one opportunity. I'll get another one, but next time I'll get it. Look how quick Alec threw them darts there, and look how he bounced along the hockey there. He's thinking to himself, you've had your chance. Adam, you didn't take it. Now it's my time. And will, Alec, will Adam be thinking of them missed doubles now? It's all very interesting. Look at the pace all of a sudden. Hey, T3. When we spoke earlier in the week, and we spoke about it tonight, there's got no scar tissue. This is where scar tissue is potentially formed. If he does go on to lose this match, those four missed match darts to win this match 4-1 will be the start of that if he doesn't process it in the correct ways. 76. But he has the opportunity. And how important would that bull in the back round be? On the type of week it's been... I can't take my eyes off the crowd at the back. They're living every dart with Adam. Five hours they've travelled down today. And with support Eight, like that. Five. And I know how that feels. Turning around to see a mass of your friends and family just gives you that extra dart. Right now, is he already thinking of the last leg decider? The week we've had, I think it would only be fitting to see the week decided one in a one-leg shootout. It requires six However, I don't think Adam's going to want it to go that way, and I certainly don't think that crowd are. But if we get a double eight here from Alec, there's going to be no choice. Because that is what we're flag. doing. A week that's had Alex everything. A week Smoke. that's had tight groups. A week that's had quality. A week that's had its ups and downs. It's been a roller coaster, but there's only one direction Seven for it from now. As it's coming it's into Adam to throw the first. final part. Game on! It's a one-leg shootout, and Adam Warner will be throwing first for the title. And for the first time as a commentator, nerves are in my stomach. One I actually want them hundred. both to win. Imagine what this can do for your career, to be a champion of champion, to be a Moda Super Series weekly winner, hey, to five. get yourself into Champions Week. Voilà. Adam is finding when the what chips are down the maximum 74. visit 174. One hundred. You begin Thank to you. doubt. Composes himself. Crowd are trying to compose themselves. One hundred. This is big. And look at them. I can't take my eyes off them. But respectful. It must be respectful for when Alec is throwing. One hundred. And it's the Paul Higgs. And require one hundred and twenty-seven. And game. Will he stay there? He's got an old head on young shoulders, this boy. But what a last dart that is. 12 darts thrown, 90. one double left, another Adam opportunity, he's had four 40. match darts already. But the process hasn't changed. This time, it's tops. This time, his opponent's on 1-2-6. Double 10. It's getting nervy. 30. It's getting very nervy here in Portsmouth. I think you require 126. And all on the 19s. He needs four 19s for the ball. That's one. That's two. That's not enough. So Adam Warner will return. Double Adam five. Required He's ten. had seven match darts already. They hold their heads. They hold their breaths. Adam holds the dart in the throwing hand. Go the perfect Xmas present for the rank outsider of the week. What a story, what a week for Adam Warner. And the noisy, vociferous crowd gather round. So impressive for Adam Warner. I knew nothing about him until this week, and that is absolutely amazing.
First leg, a victory to tonight Rovers. and see him kickstart another Game phase on. of his career. Danny McNamara, the referee. Barstow has the darts, the only match in one of our weeks 96. in which a, a bull is done to decide who throws first. And that can be the most important dart, the one thrown in the practice room because Glenn Durant, having seen both semis go 4-3, oh, you fancy this to go the distance too. Yeah, I think it would just sort of conclude what's been a very tight and competitive week. You know, both are going to create a story, but there's something special oh, about the way Chaz is playing right now. Say, Borden, I'm a little bit disappointed. He's got the crowd on his side, but maturity is key for this man. He's something that's probably been to his detriment previously. Are we going to see the best version of Rhys Robinson? 93. As Henry mentioned in the preview to this final, both of these men pitched as outsiders by the odds compilers, 7 to 1 apiece. 140. Does a try to amount a 7 to 1 accumulator in his tips early? He'd have been better off just saying back both of these, Glenn. Jeez, Chris, I've just been nice about 60. you upstairs. Reason for 160. These are the types of moments now. Whose position do you want to be in? 161 with the darts or the lowest score of 112? Right now, I know where I'd want to be. 136. Well, he was on the green, but not in the hole Desert in the end. War, 112. And now Barstow gets his swing going. Can still do it. He would have to end on the ball himself now. Right, can he do what Reese couldn't? 102. He's miscounted. Well, we said in the semi-final that counting had been a Reese big problem for both players. 25. And Chaz Barstow has just had the ultimate mathematical meltdown. Now, Reese Robinson has to stay focused. A part of him's thinking, what's going on here? And once again, there's the maturity. There's a bit of laughter in the back there. That's not what Reese Robinson normally does. I like this. I fancy this. What a marker. 13. You know what? When I saw him aiming away, Glenn, I'm thinking, surely he's not going for an 18 here. But it was. Jazzy required 10. What was interesting also, Reese is looking at the crowd. That's a very intimate venue. You have to expect that, Reese. That's why you've got to stay focused. This is not a gimme still. Five. Well, we thought it would be a dramatic final. Didn't think Reece a lot of the drama would come in the very 12. first leg, but that's what's happening here. Can Reese make peace with leg one? Game he does, leg, collides Reece in off the barrel Robinson. and wins the leg, holds his throw. But what a dramatic start to this final. Hodges yeah. broke Second the throw, didn't he? Even I'm getting Rovers. confused now. Yeah, yesterday, on. Chaz Barster wants 55. He hits a big 16. And 107. He hits the sweet as a nut. Treble 19. We're all looking at bull. 95. And he hits double top. Reese Robinson's then affected by the crowd. But still comes back for more. 140. One of the strengths, Chaz, he can put things to one side and, and go back and continue. Still all very much in the balance. 123. Glenn, we're always looking for new and different things to do on our social media at YouTube channel and the MSS 59. Darts Twitter. Maybe we're going to have to do some kind of math masterclass. Not aimed at the viewers, but the players. Just a time for me. It's tension. It's when you're up there in, in that red, red hot environment. You know, sometimes your brain can be doing some crazy things. He's probably wanted that finish a million times and never gone for tops. And in two days running, he's done two of the biggest finishing four pars you've ever seen. Do make sure you're following those accounts, by the way. Loads of content on the YouTube channel, including all of the sessions in full and highlights from everything you've seen here. Clips 164. And plenty of other stuff posted on the Twitter page as well. Now then, this could be a highlight for the highlight reel. Oh, he goes for the ball this time and gets it. Well, that is the ultimate irony. <laughs> yeah, Reese Robinson says, that was right this time, Chaz. Reese Robinson said, I was looking at tops. Rovers. Game on. Oh, wow. But in all seriousness, Reese Robinson just nodding his head, just trying to get his thoughts together. It feels like it's him and the crowd against him right now, but I used to like their environment, and that's what he needs to do. Chaz hasn't kicked off well, and Reese is back where he likes to be. One what a response. A 164 finish from Chaz Barstow, replied to with a 180 opener.
by his opponent. And by the way, Glenn, has that has Jeremy Fagg just been outvoted now? Is that the new checkout of the week? Yeah, well, I was going to say that about the previous one as well, but I think we did the uh, poll just a little bit too early. Captivating. 96. Well, if you're watching at home and you want to be here, and why wouldn't you want to be here on any of our finals night, this real intimate unique experience to watch darts and how 56. dramatic it has been you can come and feel that drama scan that qr code get yourself see it it'll take you to the ticket page at dartshop.tv any saturday night from 7 30 and you can be part of this real unique atmosphere watching top darts players doing the right things and, and sometimes the wrong things require 85. that was the right thing the afterburners are on for the 12. 45. Chaz Ruhar, 130. How important was that 180 from Chaz Bar? So gives him a chance. Still a tall ask. He's going to set it up at Reese Robinson. These are the moments. 94. Three darts at tops to lead 2 Reese 1 Ruhar, in your biggest match 40. of the year. He looks good. The tighten of the arm. Can't even begin to tell you what happens to your body. And when he goes right in the top, the big growl that he does, let the crowd know that he's feeling good. It's just break after break Bob after break so far Roberts. in this match. Who is going to keep their composure? Who is going to sprint for that line? Well, the showpiece showdown is turning into the best match of the night. As it should be. 123. Both these players going at it, producing the best stuff. Neither has faltered this evening. Well, not in terms of a, a result anyway 58 just a solid game but that first dart to robinson right now he's seeing that treble 20 140 like a bucket 59. the criticisms chris i've had about reese before his mind 59. can wander He's been superb, arguably the best player the past couple of days. But now it's all about desire. Now it's all 83. about focus. Well, let's not forget as well, Glenn, that Reese Robinson, when he played in Group B yesterday, he won all of his matches. 100. So he's actually on a seven-match winning streak. If he can make it eight, he'll take the trophy. This but. is formidable. Go back upstairs. 139. To leave a one dart, double eight finish. Robinson can see that finishing post. Yeah, he can move closer to it if he finds the double for a 13 dart. Reese requires 16. Happily settle for 14 or 15 as well. Can he gallop to the line? He Game certainly the can with a furlong to go. Robinson. There's the fist pump. The crowd don't agree with it because the crowd are all on the side of Chaz Bass. They were right in his hometown. Like Chaz to throw first. Game on. A home county before he upset any Portsmouth people there. On, on a night like tonight, surely there are more twists and turns. 85. Surely it just doesn't end 4-1 a conventional win. There is more drama to come, surely. Yeah, from the opening salve on Monday morning when Robert thought and fought back from three and it's just been a really topsy-turvy seesaw battles. It's been a great week. So ultra-competitive, massive scoring, high finishing, the big fish. We're seeing everything here. Yeah, and plenty of those 180s as well. Many of them coming from this man. And there's another one. And there's a celebration. He's enjoying it. He thinks this is a victory parade, but the job's not done yet, Reese. Stay focused, Reese. For Chaz, was he affected by that celebration? 29. Maybe I know nothing and Reese knows something. Or maybe the celebration, or maybe just the fact that he had a 180 hit straight back at him. 124. That must hurt, Glenn, when you hit a maximum and your opponent answers in kind. Someone says, like a box, if they hit you with a left, hit them with a the right. Well, it could be. Sugar Reese Robinson. Reese Rewire 100. Who's about to land the knockout blow? Another. The double 12. 126. Barstow on the canvas. Can he get up? 107. Will he go the same route? It looks like he's staying upstairs. 
for treble 17. 47. All up to the Humber man. Three to require 12. Double six to finish a job. And down for double three. Game. And Reese Shot. Robinson and reigns on week two. The Modus Super Series, Modus Super Series for a fabulous final. Plenty of drama all night, but Robinson put on a show in the decider. A 4-1 win over Chaz Barstow.